Hey everybody, welcome to another one of our at-home table reads. Tonight we're going to be tackling the Edgar Wright classic, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. So we're just going to start breaking down our cast. Leading us through tonight on action description, we have Jeremy. Perfect, there he is. The man himself, Scott Pilgrim. Eric right there, perfect. Uh, part of the band, along with him, we have Steven Stills. There's Hunter. Perfect. Kim Pine on drums. With Jess. Fantastic. Well, he simply lives there. But young Neil, we love him anyway. It's Rudy. Fantastic. Uh, we also have Julie, along with one of the uh, evil exes. We've got Karina. There she is. As our mysterious uh, pink-haired girl, Ramona. we got Ellie hanging out right down there. As uh, one of our evil exes, along with a few others, Matthew Patel, Sam, where's he at? There he is with the dramatic finger and everything. As, uh, well, the, one of the another true evil exes in this, along with another evil ex herself, uh, we have as Envy and Gideon Graves, Nicole. She is perfect. As Todd, the uh, lovely vegan telekinetic, we have Lynn. And as Roxy Richter, her? Yeah, uh, it's Angie. Perfect. All right. Well, Jeremy, take us away. Thank you. Thank you very much. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World by Edgar Wright and Michael Bacall, based on the graphic novels, novels by Brian Lee O'Malley. Exterior Toronto residential street day, snowy suburbs of Toronto, from a nondescript house we hear. Scott Pilgrim is dating a high schooler. Interior Stephen Stills kitchen day. Four 20-somethings lounge around a small kitchen table. Stephen Stills, 25, shaggy hair, Canadian cowboy sheet. Really? Is she hot? Kim Pine, 22, cute, bitters, sweatshirt with a zipper. How old are you now, Scott? Like, 28? Not playing your little games. So you've been out of high school for like 13 years and... I'm 22, I'm 22. You're dating a high school girl? Not bad, not bad. Young Neil, 20, simple mind. Layered t-shirt. Like, did you guys do it yet? Scott Pilgrim, 22, fresh face and charmingly cocky with an unruly yet adorable mop of hair. We've done many things. Um, we, we ride the bus. We've um, meaningful conversations about how your book club went and about our friends and, um, you know, drama. Yeah, okay. Have you kissed her? We almost held hands once. We almost held hands once. Um, then she got embarrassed. Well... Aren't you pleased as punch? So, what's your name? My name's Chow. She's Chinese. Chinese? Young Neil pauses his Nintendo DS. Wicked. How'd you meet her? I believe I mentioned the bus. Scott Pilgrim prepares to tell an amazing story. Interior of the bus night. Knives Chow, 17, cute and innocent with clothes to match. Sits next to her mother, Mother Chow, 45, demanding. You are 17 years old. Time to get interested in boy. Mom! Knives drops her bag, books scattering everywhere. You drop book. Knives crouches down to pick up her books, crumbling. Hey. Knives looks up to see the cute and gallant Scott Pilgrim holding her books. Text appears in on-screen box. Scott Pilgrim, 22 years old. Rating? Awesome. Stars appear, Knives eyes. Scott grins heroically. Scott winks at Knives. Scott winks at the camera. Interior Stephen Stills kitchen. Stephen Stills kitchen day. Back in the kitchen, everyone looks at Scott. Is that seriously the end of the story? Yes, it is. Young Neil unpauses his Nintendo DS. So when do we get to meet her? Oh please, let it be soon. Dingy dong. The doorbell rings. Scott smiles broadly. What's your name? Interior, exterior, Stephen Steele's house day. An eager knife stands outside. Scott opens the door, a crack. You promise to be good? Of course I'll be good. No, really, please be good. Am I normally not? Stephen Steele's comes to the door and peers through. Oh, hey, knives. Uh, this is Stephen Steele. Keep good. Now. Hey. Steele shuts the door on a confused knives. Is she going to geek out on us? I can sit in the corner, man. I mean, I want her to geek out on us. She'll geek. She keeps. She, she has the capacity to keep. Stephen Stills quickly opens the door and waves knives in. You're good. Interior Stephen Stills house day. Knives enters, looking around the rehearsal pad with awe. Bear bowl, ratty rug, drums, guitar, bass, lame brand amps. Wow. Knives, that's Kim. Let me get your coat. 
Scott throws Knives' coat on the floor. Knives waves. Hi, sorry, what was your name? Kim. You play the drums? Reveal. Kim sitting behind the drum set, sticks in her hands. Yes. That is so awesome. Knives, that's young Neil. Hi, what do you play? Uh, wow. Zelda? Tetris? That's kind of a big question. Knives stares blankly at young Neil, who finally gets it. Oh, I'm not in the band. I just live here. Sex bomb has geared up. Amps hum to life. Let's start with uh, Launchpad McQuack. That's not the actual title of it. We are Sex bomb One, two, three, four! Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Laminate the stasis. Mama, mama, serpentine. I got a breathalyzer. Yeah, my body is clean. Kim bashes the kid, and Sex Bomb explode into rock, guitar, and bass. Leads leap into the air, spelling out their title. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Titles continue over the song as the small rehearsal space seems to grow with the music. Stephen Stills barks unintelligible lyrics. Knives watches, jaw ajar. The song ends, feedback lingering. You guys are so amazing! Exterior bus stop evening. Scott by, bid, bids adieu to a stunned Knives as she gets on a bus. I can't... Sex for mom. Amazing. Knives out, sorry. <laughs> Interior, Stephen Steele's room, <laughs> evening. The band and young Neil lounge around Stephen Steele's room. She seems nice. Yeah. Seems awesome. Yeah. Scott, if your life had a face, I would punch it. Yeah. Wait, what? I mean, are you really happy or are you really evil? Like, do I have ulterior motives or something? I'm offended, Kim. Wounded, even? Hurt, Kim. You hurt? Scott takes a breath, turns to young Neil. Neil, you were saying she seems awesome? Yeah, she seems awesome. Yeah. Interior Wallace's apartment evening. Scott hangs his coat up in a tiny one-room apartment. He turns to Wallace Wells, dark hair, arched eyebrow, disloyal. Wallace Wells, roommate, 24 years old. Fun fact, he's gay. <laughs> Before you even hear some dirty lies from someone else, yes, I'm dating a 17-year-old. Wallace looks up from the Now magazine he's reading. Is he cute? Ha 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 ha. Does this mean they just stop sleeping together? Do you see another bed in there? Tiny boxes of text indicate the ownership of the items in the one room flat. 95% belongs to Wallace, futon included. Oh yeah, you're totally my bitch forever. So the whole 17 year old thing, don't tell too many people? Hey, you know me. I mean, don't tell my sister? You know me. Wallace tosses the Now magazine aside, starts texting. Who are you texting? Ringy ring, the phone goes. <laughs> Scott picks up. 17 year old? Scandal. Intercut with Stacy Pilgrim, cute, peppy barista, gabbing on her cell phone in the second cup. A sign behind her reads If you are using your cell phone, you will not be served. <laughs> Stacy Pilgrim, younger sister, 19, rating, T for teen. That's not true. Who told you? Wallace, duh. You got to be bitch. You know me. Scott turns to see Wallace on a second cordless. Wallace! Wallace clicks off. Scott sinks into an armchair. Who is this mysterious child you date? My name is Knives. Knives Chow. A 17-year-old Chinese schoolgirl. You're ridiculous. The Catholic school, too. With the uniform and everything? Yeah, the whole deal. Oh my god, you haven't. No, 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 no. We haven't even held hands. I, I think she hugged me once. Um, Scott, why are you doing this? I don't know. It's just nice, you know? It's just simple. It's been over a year since you got dumped by She Who Will Not Be Named. Scott glances down at the partially obscured Now magazine, looking into the hot girl's eyes on the back cover album ad. So are you legitimately moving on, or is this just you being insane? Scott looks at a strip of photo booth pictures. He smiles next to a hot redhead in happier times. Can I get uh, back to you on that? A school bell clangs loudly. Exterior Catholic school day. Wallace and Scott stand outside a Catholic high school. Uniform boys and girls pour out. I do not want to be here at all. 
School is boys, too. I hate you. You and I would think twice about dating a 17-year-old. Well, she's only allowed out when the sun is up, so I wouldn't call it dating more like... Playtime? It doesn't sound so good either. No. Scott! Hey! Knives skips to Scott. Her shy friend, Tamara, lingers behind. Hey, Knives. This is my cool gay roommate, uh, Wallace Wells. He's gay. Uh, oh, hi. Do you want to know who in my class is gay? Yes. Does he wear glasses? Wallace, you go now. Be gone. Wallace pulls Knives close. Whispers. You're too good for him. Run. Interior of the arcade day, Scott and Knives play Ninja Ninja Revolution. Think a martial arts version of Dance Dance Revolution. They punch and kick in unison side by side. You know the original name of Pac-Man was Puck-Man? You'd think it's because Pac-Man was like yellow hockey puck, but it's actually from uh, the Japanese phrase Paku Paku, which means to flap one's mouth open and closed. They changed it over, over here because Puck-Man is too easy to vandalize, you know, scratch out the P and turn, turn into an F or whatever. Knives slips, flips over Scott's back in a combo move. Oh my god, like, wow. Yeah, wow. The game ends. Continue appears, counting down. Ten, nine, eight. Scott looks at Knives. She digs for quarters. Oh, I got it! Exterior of Pizza Pizza Day. Day. Scott and Knives leave a pizza joint, slices in hand. Tamara is into this Korean guy, Bobby, but everybody thinks Bobby has a crush on Mina. I thought Derek and Tamara had a mutual, like, each other going... Thing going. What happened? Interior of the Goodwill Day. Scott and Knives shop for t-shirts. Hangers click in time. I don't listen to much music. I know a lot of kids who play piano or, not, or whatever, but you guys rock. I knew I personally rocked, but I never suspected that we rocked as a unit. Oh, thank you, Knives. Interior Sonic Boom Record Store Day. Scott and Knives flip through records in perfect sync. I mean, you guys are going to be huge. Uh, well, we're, we're already per pretty big, but... It might be cool if cool people wore a t-shirt. Knives speaks to a female clerk, surely with tats and specs. Julie, 22, stills. Girlfriend, rating. What is her problem? Excuse me, do you have anything by The Clash of Demon Head? Have you tried the section marked The Clash of Demon Head? Thank you, Julie. Are you coming to my party, or will you be busy babysitting? Thank you, Julie. Don't want to listen to her. And you definitely don't want to listen to them. Scott puts the Clash at Demon Head CD back in the rack. Oh, I hurt them so much. I hurt them too until they signed to a major label and the singer turned into a total bitch and ruined my life. That's just me. Envy Adams is so cool. Do you read her blog? Sorry, sorry you were saying about me? Exterior snowy Toronto street day. Scott and Knives amble down a snow-covered sidewalk. I mean, I've never gone out with someone so talented. You out with a lot of guys? No. Yeah, so whatever, man. Hmm. I've never even kissed a guy. Knives blushes and looks at the ground. Scott hugs her. Me neither. Exterior of Wallace's apartment day. Scott and Knives walk up to the front of Wallace's apartment. So this is your secret lair. Can I come in? Oh, uh, my secret lair is one of those um, no girls allowed deals. Oh, okay. Do well, you want to see the house where I grew up? Sure. They literally walk across the street to a small house. Here you go. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wind blows. The light snowfall turns into sand. Exterior of the dream desert, hottest day. Scott wanders alone through a barren land. He falls to his knees next to a lonely cactus. Oh, God. Shit. So, so alone. A mysterious girl rollerblades across the shifting sands. She wears fishnets, an army jacket, skirt, and goggles. Her pink hair is funky but cool. She's hotter than the, than the desert sun. You're not alone. You're just having some idiotic dream. What, does that mean we can make out? But she's gone. Interior Wallace's apartment? Sometime? Scott wakes up and sitting up in the futon. Oh, God. Wallace wakes up to the left of Scott, rubbing his eyes. What is it, Scott? I have this totally weird dream. A scruffy goatee guy wakes right behind Scott and Wallace. Other Scott, 22, Wallace's boyfriend. Fun, fun fact, guy curious. Gay curious? Guy curious. What is it, other Scott? Oh, can we skip the dream? Can we skip the dream time? Color me not interested. But there was this girl. Girl? 
Was this envy related drink? No, no, no. We don't use the E word in this house. No, it wasn't her. It was somebody new. Yay for that. Other Scott goes back to sleep. Wallace rubs his eyes. Hey, speaking of new, weren't you supposed to take your fake high school girlfriend to the library like a half hour ago? What? It's like six in the morning. Scott opens the bathroom door. Sunlight ignites the room. Ah! Interior the library day. What's wrong? Scott is noticeably taller than all the teens in the library. He carries a stack of books for knives. Libraries remind me of grade school. That must seem like a really long time ago. Oh, uh, let's talk about something else. The hiss of ball bearings catches Scott's attention. He freezes as he sees the rollerblading girl from his dream skating towards the desk in sexalicious slow motion. Do you know that girl? The rollerblading girl delivers a package from Amazon, California, to the librarian. Scott's gaze follows the girl as she blades out of the library. Pensive guitar underscores his thoughts. Scott? Scott continues to stare at the girl. Time slows to a crawl. Scott! Interior Stephen Stills' house, evening. Scott stands in the rehearsal room, head still in the clouds. You only played one note for that entire song. It was, uh, uh my, my hand slipped. Is your girlfriend distracting you? A meek knife sits next to young Neil on the couch. I'll be quieter. Let's do that one again. All right, what are we doing? Exterior Toronto Residential Street, night. I told you like 50 times. Scott, Kim Pine, Stephen Stills, and young Neil walk down an icy Toronto street. Scott's head is still in the clouds. We're going to this party, idiot. Party? At Julie's. Oh, I thought you guys split. We did, but you know, there may be some label guys there, so. Oh man, this is gonna suck. At least we'll give us something to complain about. Oh man. Interior Julie's house night. Aboard Scott stands next to young Neil in a very crowded house party. Both have red plastic cups in hand. This sucks. Sucks. I'm gonna go pee due to boredom. Scott exits frame. I have to pee. Neil sips his drink. Scott passes by Komu, a bespectacled hipster geek. Komu? 25, fun fact, knows everyone, including you. Hey, Koma. Hey, Scott. Some party, yeah? Get your drink on? This is Coke Zero. I don't drink. You don't drink? Well, I just think I remember you getting uh, very drunk up a couple of G&Ts one time. and. Uh... Come on, you know everyone, right? Yeah, pretty much. Do you know this one girl with hair like this? Yeah, it's Ramona Flowers. Yeah, someone said she was going to be here tonight, actually. What? We have the hospital or something? Yeah, here she's hardcore. Scott has already left a Scott-shaped dust cloud. Interior Julie's house, moments later. Scott scans the party. His eyes go wide. He crushes his plastic cup. There she is, playing the wall. Ramona, aloof, in, enigna, enigmatic, hot. Scott si saddles up and stands next to her. Hey, what's up? Nothing. Hey, you know Pac-Man? I know of him. Scott begins to babble. Well, you know, Pac-Man was originally Puck-Man, but... Not because Pac-Man looks like a hockey puck, like Paku 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 means flapping your mouth. And they changed it because if you scratch out the P and turn it into an F, you know, like. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, am I dreaming? Ramona looks at Scott blankly. He slowly skulks away. Okay, uh, I'll leave you alone forever now. Then he stalked her for the rest of the party. Series of quick shots as Scott follows Ramona. He ducks around corners, spies from behind a much bigger dude. Ramona leaves the party. Scott grabs a startled young Neil. Dude! What? She's totally real! Who? Ramona, Ramona Flowers. Yeah. What? Jump cut. Scott runs towards Coma. Dude! What do you know about Ramona Flowers? Oh, all I know is that she's American. American? Oh. Uh, but you should talk to Sandra and Monique. Sandra and Monique, 24, two girls, Coma knows. Lady Deuce, what do you know about Ramona Flowers? Uh, I think she's a boyfriend. Some guy back in New York. Doesn't she have the most ridiculous name? I know, it's so Ramona Quimby, aged eight, and yet Flowers. The girls laugh. Scott does not. <laughs> yeah, what else? Jump cut through a flurry of faces as Scott asks everyone about Ramona. I heard she kicks all kinds of ass. She's on another level. She's got men dying at her feet. 
She's got some battle scars. Not to be entered into lightly. We end on the Shirley Julie, the rude clerk who steps in front of Scott, arms crossed. Stephen Stills is with her. What about Ramona Flowers? You know her, tell me now. Just moved here, got a job with Amazon, comes to my work. Does she really? Didn't you just say she broke up with someone, Jules? Did she really? That they had a huge fight or whatever? Did they really? Yes, but I didn't want Scott to know that, Stephen. Yeah, I, I don't know about it, what, about the, that girl. She just... Scott, I forbid you from hitting on Ramona, even if you haven't had a real girlfriend in over a year. What? Hey, whoa, whoa. Scott's mourning period is officially over. He's totally dating a high schooler. Dating a high schooler is the mourning period. She's got a point. You guys broke up. I don't want you scaring off the coolest girl at my party, Scott. We all know you're a total lady killer wannabe jerky jerk. That's garbage. I'm completely untrue. That time with Lisa? Misunderstanding. That time with Holly? Not what it looked like. The time you dumped Kim for? Hey, me and Kim are all good now. Scott looks at Kim. We hear the sound of arctic winds. Whatever. Ramona's out of your league. Let's leave it at that. And anyways, I'm not even sure she really did have a big breakup. She keeps mentioning some guy named Gideon. Yeah, I don't know what it is about that girl. She just... Forget it, Scott. Interior Wallace's apartment night. Scott lies on the futon, wide awake. Wallace storms in. Guess who's drunk? I guess Wallace. You guess right. Wallace flops onto the futon, landing next to Scott. <clears throat> so that girl from my dream. Mm, girl, okay. Yes, I'm at the library. The library. Can we pretend you're talking about a guy? So then I was, uh, I'm at this party and, hey, there she is. Hey, there she is. Um, I think she's, you think she's, I think, I think she's the girl of my dreams. Aw, you should break up with your fake high school girlfriend. I've never been so sure about something. And you should break up with your fake high school girlfriend. What's up? Break up with your fake girlfriend. I'm not getting it. Wallace strips off. Ringy ring, Scott answers, intercut with Stacy sitting on a bus on her cell phone. You're thinking of juggling two chicks? Not even. Well, you should break up with your fake high school girlfriend. Wait, who told you? Duh, Wallace. He's not even conscious. Whatever. You, of all people, should know how sucky it is to get cheated on. Do you have a job to do? You're right. I should send out a mass text to this. Bye. Scott looks to Wallace, who is out cold, cell phone in hand. Wallace, how do you do that? Hard cut to morning light, filling the room. Wallace! Mm. Wallace sits bolt upright. Scott sits at Wallace's computer. Amazon.ca. Oh, what's the website for that? Amazon.ca. Awesome. I have, I have to order something really cool. You've got mail. <sighs> Pink claims I have mail. It's amazing what they can do with computers these days. Dude, now I'm reading it. I'm happy for you. Dear Mr. Pilgrim. It has come to my attention that we will be fighting oh. soon. My name is Matthew Patel and I'm blah, 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 fair warning, blah, blah, blah. This is, this is, this is. What? This is boring, dude. Click. Scott walks to the front, moments pass. Scott, are you waiting for the package you just ordered? Maybe. It's the weekends. It won't ship till Monday at the earliest. Dingy dong. Scott jumps to his feet. You were saying? Scott opens the door. It's Knives' trail. Hey. Tag. Knives smothers Scott. Tag. Oh, that's cute. He plasters on his best fake smile. Remember you were supposed to meet me at the bus stop half an hour ago? How could I possibly forget? Interior sonic boom day. Scott and Knives slip through the record bins. Out of sync. Your book club is getting so boring. I can't believe the music they put on while we work. Yeah, that's uh, sucky, yeah. Interior of the Goodwill Day, Knives buys a hip and trendy jacket. Scott sits on a couch next to the do not sit sign, still distracted. Hannah broke up with Alan and now she's all into Derek. Uh -huh. Exterior, pizza, pizza, day. Scott and Knives walk out of a pizza joint. Knives, Knives chows down on a slice. Scott doesn't eat, his thoughts elsewhere. But Tamara claims she has dibs on Derek. Come on, I tell you. Interior of the arcade day. Scott and Knives play Ninja Ninja Revolution side by side. Scott plays half-heartedly, his timing off. Combo! 
Knives goes to flip over Scott, but he messes up. The mirror image of Scott's video game avatar appears on screen. Uh oh, Nega Ninja. Nega Ninja squares up against Scott's avatar. You never get past that guy. Scott has his little video game his little video game head cut off. The continue con countdown comes up. Ten, nine, eight. You want to keep going? Scott takes a long look at knives. Um, I think we. Um, I think Scott takes a deep breath. This is never easy. Three, two, one. Into your Stephen Stills house evening. Game on, everybody. Game on. An exciting Stills addresses Sex Bobom. Scott tunes in his tunes his bass alone by the window, staring out. I got us a show. Oh my gosh, when? Knives bursts into frame. Scott winces. Wednesday, the rocket. And even better, it's the TIBB. The Toronto International Battle of the Bands. That's right. This guy at work was like, Steve, do you know anyone in a band? And I was like, I'm in a band. And he was like, you're in a band? And I was like, yeah, I'm totally in a band. Great story, man. Is there like a prize or something? Only a record deal with G-Man Graves. What, who? You don't know. Andy, producer of the Millennium? Oh. Whoa. Stills gestures to Knives, homemade Sex Bob Bomb t-shirt. If we win, it won't just be Knives wearing a Sex Bob Bomb shirt. It'll be the cool kids, too. Knives can barely contain herself. She grabs Scott. I will do everything I can to get out of study group and come. Sure, great. We follow Scott as he walks into it in a daze to the bathroom. Oh my gosh, who are you battling? Crash and the boys. That the one band with Crash and those boys? Yeah, that's the one. I hate them. Oh my gosh, I hate them too. Yeah, they suck. Into your Steven Stills house bathroom evening. Scott pees in a state of dreamy reverie. The pee bar above his head slowly reduces. He stares at himself in the mirror. Scott exits the bathroom, entering into your dream high school sometime. A long, empty high school hallway. Scott's footsteps echo as he moves towards a classroom door with a star on it. Ramona Flowers bursts through the door, skating past Scott and down the hall. Package from Amazon clutched in her hand. Scott runs after her, around a corner, down a row of lockers, leading to the outside of Wallace's apartment? Interior Wallace's apartment morning. Scott leaps out of the futon and runs towards the front door, throwing it open and startling Ramona Flowers just as she presses the doorbell. Dingy dong. Hi, um, I was thinking about asking you out, but then I realized how stupid that would be. You want to go out sometime? Um, no, that's okay. You just have to sign for this, all right? I just woke up and you were in my dream. I, I dreamt you were delivering out this package. Is that weird? It's not weird at all. It's not? No, it's just like you've got this really convenient super space highway running through your head that I like to use. It's like three miles and 15 seconds. Right. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You guys don't have that in Canada. You don't remember me, do you? I met you at the party the other day. Were you the Pac-Man guy? No, not even. Oh, uh, that was uh, some total ass. I was the other guy. You're Ramona Flowers, right? That's me. Uh, so you're, like, American? Why? Am I coming off as rude? No, 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 no. Scott stands in awe of Ramona. She gives him a pen. You know, you need to sign for this, whatever this is. That'd be really cool. You'd be impressed. You still have to sign. But if I sign for it, you'll leave. Yeah, that's how it works. Okay, well, can we just maybe just hang out sometime, get to know each other? You're the new kid on the block, right? I've lived here forever. I mean, there are reasons for you to hang out with me. You're all over the place. You're like my dream girl? I need to find a new route. Either that or you need to start hanging out with me. You want me to hang out with you? Um, you know, that's cool. If I say yes, will you sign for your damn package? Scott finally signs on the dotted line and throws the package straight in the trash. Done. So yeah, uh, 8 o'clock? Exterior park night. Scott finds Ramona waiting at the top of some stairs in the park. The Toronto skyline gleams in the night behind them. Why are you just standing there? Dude, I'm totally waiting on you. Sorry, I just assumed you were too cool to be on time. Well, you assumed wrong. So what do you do? We could get a, uh, what do you want to do? Uh, we could get a slice of pizza pizza or flip through some records, Sonic Boom, or there's this awesome game called Ninja, Ninja Revolution at. I'm not into simulated, simulated violence. 
I'm cool with whatever you want to do. This is good. Scott and Ramona trudge through the snow in the empty park. Yeah, you're it's right. good. Uh, so how'd you end up in Toronto? Just needed to escape, I guess. Oh, yeah? I got this job here, and Gideon had always said Toronto was one of his one of the great cities, so... Is Gideon, um, is he your boyfriend? He's a friend. Was he your boyfriend? Do you mind if we don't get into that right now? <laughs> That's so not interesting to me. They sit on this. Uh, they sit on some swings in the park. So, what about you? What do you do? Um, uh, between jobs. Between what and what? My last job is a long story filled with sighs. Oh. No, plenty of those. Is that why you left New York? Pretty much. It was time to head somewhere a little more chilled. Well, it's um certainly chilled here. Yeah. Uh. Oh yeah, uh, so it's totally chilled here. Uh, yeah, chilled isn't cold. Yeah. Uh, I'm totally obsessed with you. I didn't mean to get you obsessed. I'm just, I just haven't been obsessed with a girl for a long time. It's weird. That's probably because you sleep with a guy. Um. I was guessing from your apartment, but you totally do. It's, we're just poor. Um, we, we can't afford two beds. We're, we're not gay, actually. No, a waltz is pretty gay. Dude, relax. I believe you. You're too desperate to be gay. That's so stupid. Aw, you're probably not that stupid. <laughs> Ramona hops off her swing. I'm mostly stupid. Well, you're definitely stupid if you want to go out with me. Exactly, yeah. The snowfall gets heavier. This is ridiculous. Isn't it like April? Yeah, um, I can barely see you. This whole thing is an unmitigated disaster. I think act of God is a pretty decent excuse for a lousy date. So this is a date, eh? Did I say date? Slip of the tongue. Tongue. The snow gets heavier still. Ramona walks away. Anyway, nights are not over yet. I think there's a thingy up here somewhere. A thingy? A door. A door? I, I can't see you. I'm blind. Help me. A door with a star on it appears at the, uh, out of the whiteness. Ramona opens the door. Scott and Ramona fall into blackness. Interior Ramona's apartment night. Scott shivers at the kitchen table of Ramona's cozy, girl-friendly apartment. He watches as she slips out of her coat. What kind of tea do you want? There's more than one kind? We have blueberry, raspberry, ginseng, sleepy time, green tea, green tea with lemon, green tea with lemon and honey, uh, liver disaster, ginger with honey, ginger without honey, vanilla, almond, white truffle, blueberry, chamomile, vanilla, walnut, constant comment, and Earl Grey. Uh, did you um, make some of those up? I think I'll have sleepy time. That sounds good to me. Let me get you a blanket. Uh, that would actually be awesome. Ramona exits after Ramona alone. Scott ventures upstairs. He wanders towards a half-open door. Pushing it open, he finds Ramona in her bedroom in her bra and skirt. Dude, I'm changing. Scott covers his eyes, and our screen goes black. Uh, sorry, I'm just, um, cold. Here, does this help? It's very warm. What is that? Scott opens his eyes to see Ramona hugging him. Oh. Okay. They look into each other's eyes. Camera circles Scott and Ramona as they begin an awesome makeout session. Scott imagines himself soundtracking the kiss with a slinky bass line. Ramona breaks off smiling. Scott is in heaven. Were you, were you just gonna bring the blanket from your bed? Yes. Maybe, maybe we, we should just get under it since we're so cold. Well, what about our tea? I can um, not have tea. The slinky bass line continues as Ramona takes her skirt off, revealing black panties to complement black bra. Scott takes his shirt off. They tumble onto the bed and make out. Then... I change my mind. Change it to what? From, from what? I don't want to have sex with you, Hilgum. Not right now. Oh. Okay. It's not like I'm going to send you home in a snowstorm or anything. You can sleep in my bed, and I reverse the right, reserve the right to change my mind about the sex later. Ramona curls up next to Scott. This is cool. Just this. It's been like a really long time and this is, I think I needed this. 
whatever this is. So thanks. You're welcome. They exchange a smile. Then without warning, we jump cut to into your Ramona's room morning, daylight. Scott awakens. Ramona is gone. An arrow points to the empty spot in the bed next to him. No Ramona. Another arrow point another arrow point out that out that she's in the shower. Ramona steps out of the bathroom in a towel. Scott relaxes. I have to work. Work? You have to leave. Exterior Ramona's apartment morning. Ramona skates towards the front gate. Scott walking next to her. Waist deep snow covers the roads and sidewalks. Hey, um, can this not be a one night stand? For one thing, I didn't even get any that was a joke. What did you have in mind? Um, oh, uh, some of the first round of this battle of the bands thing? You have a band? Yeah, we're terrible. Sure. Ramona shrugs and rollerblades through the snow, somehow. Wait, can, can I get your number? Shoop! Ramona skids to a stop right back next to Scott. She hands him a note. Ramona Flowers, 212-664-7665. X, 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 X. Wow. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's been so long. Wow, girl number. Scott looks back up. Ramona is already skating far, far away. See you at the show, Scott Pilgrim. Oh, hey, it's tonight at the... Interior of the Rocket night. The Rocket. Fun fact, this place is a toilet. Ramona wades through a grungy venue under the stair, the stare of young hipsters reaching Scott at the bar. He stands with Wallace and Stacy. She holds hands with a guy wearing glasses. You totally came. Yes, I did totally come. Scott is so amazed at her presence. His social skills vanish. He's my brother. He's chronically enfeebled. I'm Stacy. Hey. And this is Wallace, his roommate. Hey. And this is my boyfriend, Jimmy. Hey. And this is Knife, Scott. Scott goes white. He didn't even see Knives come in. Hey! Hey! Knives pecks Scott on the cheek. He pushes her away. Knives looks kind of sexy, wearing makeup and new clothes. It's like the queen of the other world because they both like, want to beat like, Scott. I, uh... Leon stare downs all around. Right Stacy right stares at Scott. Nine knives nine and Ro Oh! And so Ramona so stare at each other. Wallace stares at Jimmy. Yeah. And I mean, he has uh, to King. Go. Scott scurries off. We hear feedback from a mic on stage. Because uh, the cutscene swaps it. This Thank next you. band are from Brampton, and they are called Crashing the Boys. Interior of the Rocket backstage continues. Scott runs backstage to see Stills ob obsessively flipping through a chart with a hand down, with a hand drawn stats of their rival band. This is a nightmare. Is this a nightmare? Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Once we're on stage, you'll be fine. You were just on stage for sound check. The sound guy hated us. Just nerves. Pre-show jitters. People love us. Right? Scott sounds less than convincing. He looks up at Ramona and Knives sitting with Wallace, Jimmy, and Stacy in the balcony. Mm -hmm. Interior of the rocket stage continues. Crash and the boys tune up. A drunk Wallace turns to Jimmy. Jimmy, do they rock or do they suck? They haven't, uh, they haven't started yet. That was a test, Jimmy. You passed. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Crash, and these are the boys. Is that girl a boy, too? Yes. Trash, a eight-year-old girl drummer, gives Wallace the finger. Interior of the rocket backstage continues. Sex bomb bomb peer at the band from offstage, Kim Glowers. They have a girl drummer? Interior of the rocket stage continuous. This is called, I am so sad. I am so very sad. And it goes a little something like this. <laughs> Crash and the boys play a whole song in 0 .04 seconds. Thank you. Wallace yells from his balcony. Not a race, you guys. This song is for the guy who keeps yelling in the balcony and it's called, we hate you, please die. Sweet, I love this one. Crash continues his rampage of musical hate. Interior of the rocket backstage continuous. These guys are good. Are these guys good? Kim Pine scowls harder than ever. These guys are good. Interior of the rocket stage continuous. This is called Last Song Kills Audience. It'll be our last song tonight, and your last song ever. 
Sound explodes from the stage. The audience are stunned. Interior of the Rocket Backstage continues. Stills paces backstage as the others watch the band. How are we supposed to follow this? We're not going to win. We're not going to sign with G-Man. And we'll never play opening night at the Chaos Theater. God damn it, Seth God. Will you stop just standing there? You're freaking me out. Interior of the Rocket Balcony continues as Crash and the Boys climax. Stacy turns to Ramona. How do you know Scott? He's, um, he's a friend. Hard for me to keep track sometimes. He has so many friends. Ramona arches an eyebrow. Stacy turns to Knives and Tamara. So oh, Knives, how did you meet Scott? Interior of the Rocket Backstage continues. Scott looks up into the balcony, sees Stacy talking to Knives. He turns around and slaps Stephen Steele's in the face. We gotta, we gotta play now and loud. Interior of the Rocket Balcony continues. Stacy and Ramona listen intently to Knives' story. Well, I was on the bus with my mom. Knives freezes, staring at the stage. Is that seriously the end of the story? Oh my gosh, they're on! Interior of the Rocket Stage continues. On stage, a disheveled promoter walks to the mic. This next band is from Toronto, and yeah, so give it up for Sex Bomb um, Bob Bomb? Sex Bob Bomb. Walk on. Wallace and Knives give the only cheers. <laughs> hey, Scott, you ready? Scott nods vigorously. Kim, are you ready? Angle on now, she faints in the excitement. Three, four! Sex with Bob, rock out. <laughs> I'll take you for a ride. Oh my god, it's shot. Oh no. I'll take you to the dark. Cause you're my queen. Pick you up town. I'll show you the sights you wanna ride. Oh my god, it's truck. Truck, truck, truck. As bands trees by. Don't ride through Peter's hour of my. My, 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 my. Got a stereo. You just gotta turn the knob and baby we'll go as far as we can. I'll be a garbage man. I'll take out your junk and I'll crush it down to see my rear view. And the highway which one is up ahead. Yeah, my garbage trucks. I never throw you away when you're old and gray. Just roll it away. Just then, a chunk of ceiling crashes down, and an aspinely Indian hipster kid dives head first through the hole, finger pointed at Scott as he sails towards the stage. Matthew Patel lands on stage and glares at Scott through a lopsided fringe. He wears an evil grin and a jacket that borders on flamboyant. He drags on a cigarette, blacked out. Mr. Pilgrim, it is I, Matthew Patel. Consider our fight begun. What did I do? Matthew Patel leaps in the air and sails towards Scott. <laughs> what did I do? Fight! Scott throws his base to young Neil and blocks Patel with his left arm, then punches him across the floor with his right. Patel lands like a cat, flips his fringe, and glares at Scott. All right. All right. Hey, watch out. It's that one guy. Thank you, Wallace. Patel runs at Scott. Scott spin kicks Patel in the chin and sends him flying into the air. They land in the pit, knocking hipsters down and squaring off in the resulting circle. You're quite the opponent, uh, opponent, Pilgrim. Who the hell are you anyway? The lighting guy spotlights the fighters. My name is Matthew Patel. I am Ramona's first evil ex-boyfriend. What? Ramona's first evil ex-boyfriend? All eyes whip up to Ramona. 
Anyone need another drink? Patel attacks Scott with a spin kicks. Scott blocks. Patel punches. Scott blocks and holds his hand up for a timeout. Uh, we're fighting because of Ramona? Didn't you get my email explaining the situation? I uh, skimmed it. You will pay for your insolence! Patel attacks, landing kicks and punches. Scott evades and counterattacks. Patel evades, then lands more punches. Scott jumps, spins away from danger. They pause, breathing heavy. Hey, what's up with his outfit? Yeah, is he a pirate? Scott looks at Patel's outfit. Are you a pirate? Pirates are in this year? Patel attacks again. They exchange furious blows until Patel puts Scott in a chokehold. Scott looks up, at, up to Fiona. Ramona. Jesus. You really, you really went out with this guy? Yeah, in the seventh grade. The lighting guy swings the spotlight to Ramona in the balcony. We see a sketchy childlike animated flashback. It was football season, and for some reason, all the little jocks wanted me. Matthew was the only non-white, non-jock boy in school probably in the entire state. So we joined forces and took them all out. We, won, we were one hell of a team. Nothing could beat Matthew's mystical powers. Nothing but preteen capriciousness. We only kissed once. After a week and a half, I told him to hit the showers. The spotlight swings back on the Scott and Patel. Dude, what? Wait, mystical powers? Patel levitates into the air and points at Ramona. You'll pay for this, flowers! Patel snaps his fingers and launches into a Bollywood song. If you want. <laughs> if you want to fight me, you're not the. Hold on. Woo! I'm... You're not the brightest. You won't know what. Hit you in the slightest. Patel levitates into the air. Four hot girls in skirts with fangs and bat wings appear in the air around him. Me and my fireballs and my demon hipster chicks. I'm talking the talk because I know I am slick. Patel and the demon hipster chicks shoot fireballs at Scott. He flips onto the stage, narrowly dodging the attack. Fireball girls! Take the sucker down. The demon hipster chicks unleash more fireballs. Scott dodges. The house drum kid is trapped behind them. Let us show him what we're all about. Scott hits the ground, dodging a third wave of fireballs. They explode, crash, and the boys in the wings. That doesn't even rhyme. Scott rolls across the stage, grabs one of Kim's symbols, and throws it Captain America style. Nice. It hits Patel square in the eye. Poof! The demon hipster chicks vanish. This is impossible. How can that be? Scott leaps into the air. Patel opens his eyes just in time to see Scott Pilgrim's fist racing towards his face. Open your eyes. Maybe you'll see. K.O. Scott punches Patel. He explodes into coins. They clatter to the stage floor. Scott lands and picks them up. Yeah, sweet coins. Interior of the rocket balcony continues. Ramona makes her way out fast. Passes Stacy. Well, it was great meeting you. Tell your gay friends I, your gay friends I said bye. Gay hey, friends? Stacy turns to see Wallace and Jimmy making out. Wallace? Not again! Ramona passes knives, who's being resuscitated by Tamara. Interior of the rocket stage continues. Scott picks up the coins on stage and counts them. Oh man, 240? It's not even enough for me at the bus home. I'll lend you the 30 cents. Your Ramona yanks Scott away. The promoter ambles back on stage. Yeah, so like, sex bob -um wins. Interior, the rocket balcony continues. Knives is now wide awake, clapping wildly from the balcony. Her eyes scan the venue for Scott, but he is long gone. Interior, the bus night. So... A bemused Scott and mortified Ramona sit on the bus home. What was that all about? Uh, I guess... Ramona takes a deep breath looks deep into Scott's eyes. If you're going to date me, you have to defeat my seven evil exes. You have seven evil ex-boyfriends? Seven exes, yes. So I have to fight? Defeat. Defeat your seven evil exes if we're going to continue to date? 
Pretty much. So what you're saying is we're dating? Uh, I guess. Cool. You want to make out? Uh. Scott kisses Ramona. The studio audience, pause. Mm -hmm. Interior Wallace's apartment morning. A bleary, a bleary Wallace mm -hmm. fries bacon. Scott bursts through the front door. A spring in his step. The studio audience, uh, audience applauds. Somebody's happy. Well, someone got the second base last night. And someone has a second date tonight. <laughs> Someone's lucky then. You know, when I say someone, I mean me, right? I got a second base last night. Maybe first and a half. <laughs> Wallace shoots a look at the idiotically upbeat Scott. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. I'm inviting Ramona over for dinner, so you can't be here tonight. I don't want you uh, getting up the place. Okay, Scott. But in return, I have to issue an ultimatum. One of your famous ultimatums. And they live in infamy. You have to break up with knives today, okay? Scott huffs and helps himself to some of Wallace's bacon. But, but it's hard. If you don't do it, I'm gonna tell Ramona about knives. I swear to God, Scott. But you're, you, you're. At this point, a sleepy Jimmy wanders out of the bathroom and helps himself to coffee. Morning. Scott points bacon at Wallace unaccusingly. Unaccus Double standard! Hey, I didn't make it the gay rule book. If you have a problem with it, take it up with Liberace's ghost. You're a monster. Put the bacon down and go do your dirt while I watch the Lucas Lee marathon on TBS Superstation. Who's Lucas Lee? Ooh. Wallace points to a hunky actor on the cover of Now magazine. Well, he's a pretty good skater. He's a pretty good actor. He's filming at the Winifred Haley movie at the Toronto, Air up in Toronto right now. Do you make movies in Toronto? Yes, I'm stalking him later. So this Lucas Lee? Lucas Lee is not important to you right now. Get out. Uh, you suck, surprising no one. Scott grumbles off. Wallace turns the television way up. We see Lucas Lee on a payphone in some crummy thriller. Listen close and listen hard, bucko. The next click is me hanging up. The one after that is me pulling the trigger. Exterior payphone on a busy street day. A shivering and annoyed Scott dials the payphone. Oh, hey, Knives. Um, do you want to, like, talk or whatever? Are you wearing a tan jacket, like a spring jacket and a hoodie? Um, Scott checks what he's wearing. Spooky music underscores. And a dorky hat. It's not dorky. What are you, a uh, psychic? A beaming Knives knocks on the payphone glass. Oh, uh, okay. Hi. Interior sonic boom day. The spooky music continues on in the record store. Scott is on edge as Knives geeks over a standee, a standee for the clash at Demon Head. It features sultry blonde singer Envy Adams posing and the rest of the band shrouded in shadow and mist. I can't believe they're coming to town. Will you take me to the show? Yeah, listen. The spooky music gets louder, pounding inside Scott's head. Oh, hey, I wanted to invite you over for dinner. Like Chinese food? Mm, it's not my favorite. Well, to my parents, it's my birthday dinner. Um, I think that's a really bad idea. Like, just so bad. No, it's okay. Why? Well, I mean, I'm too old for you. No, you're not. My dad is nine years older than my mom. And and are you even allowed to date outside your race or whatever? I don't care. I'm in love. The knives. Knives is so smitten, the word actually appears on screen. Scott brushes it away. The spooky music comes to a stop. Um, listen, I was thinking we should break up or whatever. Really? Yeah. Um, it's not going to work out. Oh. Scott walks out, leaving knives in the aisle. Interior of the bus, slash record store day. Scott sits on the bus alone, thinking about knives. Crosscut with knives still in the record store in shock. On the bus, Scott sighs, thinks of something happier. Crosscut with Ramona rollerblading, her funky pink hair. On the bus, Scott smiles, a little happier. Interior, exterior, Stephen stills, a basement evening. Sex with bomb, tune up. Kim spins a drumstick in her fingers. Where's knives? Not coming tonight? Oh no, we, we broke up. Young Neil pauses his DS. Kim and stills share a look. Oh, check it out. I learned the bass line from Final Fantasy 2. Scott plays the insanely simple video game tune. Scott, you are the salt of the earth. 
Oh, thanks. Wait, I meant scum of the earth. Oh, thanks. You, you broke up with knives? Yeah, but don't worry. Maybe you'll uh, meet my new, new girlfriend soon. New, new. Kim, I'm shooting herself. Still, unplug Scott's aim. Okay, from here on out, no girlfriends or girlfriend talk at practice, whether they're old, new, or new, new. We were lucky to survive that last round. This is sudden death now, okay? Okay. Dingy dong. That's for me. Scott opens the door to see Ramona, now sporting blue hair. Yeah, hey, you're, hey, yeah, you're, you're here. Yes, like you said. Is it not cool? Scott ushers her in, weirded out by this hair development. You know your hair? I know of it. It's all blue. Yeah, I just dyed it. Are you going to introduce me? Oh yeah, this is Stephen Stills, young Neil, and that's Kim. Hey everyone. Everyone mumbles back. Hey, Scott still stares at Ramona's hair. Is it weird not being pink anymore? I change my hair every week and have to get used to it. So uh, how do you guys all know each other? High school, I guess. What Neil said. I'm Neil. Believe it or not, I actually dated Scott in high school. Got any embarrassing stories? Yeah, he's an idiot. <laughs> Scott fake laughs, starts ushering uh, Ramona out again. Uh, okay, uh, cool. See you guys tomorrow. Uh, what about rehearsal? Who knows my parts? I'm Neil. Interior Wallace's apartment night. Ramona lounges reading a magazine. A tense Scott hurries around the kitchen area, preparing food as Wallace looks on. You doing okay there? Yeah, good, good. Ramona goes to the bathroom. Scott drops the act. She changed her hair. So what? It looks nice blue. I know, but she changed it without even making a big deal about it. She's spontaneous, impulsive, fickle. Oh my god, what did I do? Can't believe you're worried about me getting up the place. Ramona returns. Wallace pulls on a jacket. How's dinner coming along? Yeah, good, good. Okay, I'm gonna leave you lovebirds to it. I'm heading up to Casa Loma to stuck my head in a crush. Scott stops Wallace at the door with a panicked whisper. Don't go! You man the hell up. You would get the second and a half base tonight. You think so? Well, if you strike out in the next half hour, come and find me at the castle. If I strike out? Okay, when? See you in 60. Fifteen minutes later, Ramon and Scott eat on the floor, picnic style. Scott has cooked garlic bread, and only garlic bread, for dinner. This is actually a really good garlic bread. Well, garlic bread is my favorite food. I could honestly eat it for every meal or just all the time without even stopping. You get fat. No, why would I get fat? Bread makes you fat. Bread makes you fat? Fifteen minutes later, a nervy Scott serenades Ramona on his bass guitar. So I, I wrote a song about you. Oh yeah? It goes like, Ramona, Ramona, ra 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 Ramona, 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 ra 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 Mona, oh. I can't wait to hear it when it's finished. Finished? Fifteen minutes later, Scott makes out with Ramona on the futon. Scott smiles as she runs her hands through his hair. Your hair's pretty shaggy. Oh my god, I don't need a haircut, do I? Scott sits up like a shot. Ramona's taken aback. What? Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. It's just um, that I got, I got a bad haircut right before me and my big ex broke up, but it's a long time ago. I can barely remember it. A deep voice narrator chimes in. Early, early, <laughs> Earl Jones deep. Scott is acutely aware that his last salon haircut took place exactly 431 days ago, three hours before his big breakup. He blames this largely on the haircut and has been cutting his own hair ever since. Sounds like a bad time. Not really. It was. It was a mutual thing. It wasn't. I mean, she told me it was mutual. She dumped him. It was brutal. What was her name? She was uh, Nat when I met her, but she stopped liking that name. Then she stopped liking me. Your hair is cute. I like it long. But I'd rather, I'd rather, but it'd be cute as short, wouldn't it? Scott disappears and just as quickly reappears, now wearing his dorky snow hat, hair tucked tightly beneath the flaps. What? Why are you wearing that? Um, I thought we could go for a walk. Exterior endless stairway night, 15 minutes later. Scott and Ramona climb a stairway, long handrail between them. Tell me, we didn't come out here just so you could cover your hair with that hat. 
No, I just, um, I just love me some walking, putting one leg in front of the other. You seem a little heightened. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm just, when I'm with you, I feel like I'm on drugs. Not that I do drugs, unless you do, and in case, in case I do drugs all the time, every drug, but you make me feel, I don't know, things seem a little brighter around you or something. Ramona and Scott finally reach the top of the stairs and night turns to day as if crossing a magical line. What is this place? A totally awesome castle. They're shooting the, this movie up there. Ramona looks up at the looming Casa Loma, a castle surrounded by big, bright movie set lights. Who's in it? Winifred Haley and some actor guy. Oh, who? I forget. Let's find out. Exterior Casa Loma continuous. A crew readies a shot of Winifred Haley, held ho hostage by some goon. A stand-in takes the place of the leading man. Scott and Ramona approach some spectators, including Wallace. Did you find the guy you're stalking? I think I'm about to right now. Mr. Lee is traveling. Mr. Lee? Lucas Lee. Oh. Oh? Da, 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 da. That's it. The Universal <laughs> Studios fanfare announces Lucas Lee as he exits his trailer, smoking a cigarette, blacked out. He skates towards the set, doing kickflips. The spectators go, ooh. I want to have his adopted babies. Oh, man. We got to go. What? Why? I used to date that clown. What? Wallace, I am not a slut. I can think of no higher accolade. Lucas steps to his mark and puffs into an action hero mode. Action. Lucas Lee points his board at the goon. Oh. My. God. Fucking yeah. down. <laughs> hey. Hey. The only thing keeping me and her apart is two minutes ago to take kick your ass. You dated a famous guy? In ninth grade, we had drama. Actually, it might have been math. I just remember there being lots of drama. Hey! Lucas Lee points at Scott, who remains oblivious. He just followed me around. He was a little snot-nosed brat. He had snot nose, but he's famous. Hey! It's not a big deal. I only dated him for a week and a half. I'm talking to you, Scott Pilgrim. Lucas Lee stomps towards Scott, who gasps. Famous and he talked to me. The only thing keeping me and her apart is the two bits is gonna take to kick your ass. Can I get... Pow! Lucas Lee punches Scott, flooring him. Scott comes back with a pen and paper wobbly. Can I get your autograph? Pow! Lucas Lee punches Scott again. He nods to Ramona. Uh, how's life? He seems nice. Lucas Lee throws Scott up into a castle turret. To Ray, crumbling it. Scott's cra Scott Scott's crashes down through scaffolding onto the set. Lucas holds up his hand for a quick conti continuity photo, photo, and then stomps over to pick up a day Scott from the ground. Scott, you Alex, right? Think you could stand a chance against an A-lister, bro? Lucas Lee punches Scott again. He slides across the wet down ground. A set nurse sprays Lucas knuckles with anti antiseptic. Some condition you are. Lucas Lee wanders off. Scott staggers to his feet, punchy. Hey, 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 I'm not done. Scott spins Lucas around only to find an identical standard. Looks like you're seeing double. Scott turns to see the real Lucas smirking on the sidelines. Pow! The identical stand-in punches Scott to the ground. He's good, right? Sometimes I let him do wide shots if I feel like getting Blaze back in my arena. Scott stands to fight the double. Suddenly, countless stuntmen fan out behind the stand-in, all identically dressed, all carrying skateboards and ready to rumble. I'm nothing without my stunt team. The stuntmen attack Scott Pilgrim with a howl. Scott punches through a couple of the boards, Taekwondo style. Ask him how it feels to always get his sloppy seconds. How does it feel to cry? Scott takes a skateboard to the face, followed by a barrage of crippling skateboard plows to his knees and ribs. I'm gonna get Close. coffee. I'm gonna get coffee. You boys want anything? We follow the smirking Lucas to the coffee station. We hear the noise of punching and kicking slowly upsub subside to nothing. Mr. Lee? Lucas turns, shocked to see Scott in front of a painted 2D skyline backdrop surrounded by many unconscious stuntmen. You need it back on set. Scott charges Lucas and leaps into a flying kick. Lucas grabs his foot and hurls him through the back backdrop. Rip. Scott lands in a crump, fra framed through the, the torn skyline. Lucas stomps over to him, preparing for the death blow. Prepare. Prepare to feel the wrath of the League, league of Evil Exes. The League of Evil Exes? You, you really don't know about the League? Um... Seven Evil Exes coming to kill you? 
controlling the future of Amona's love life? No. Oh, well, don't worry about it then. Really? Yeah, man. Let's grab a beer. Lucas offers a hand. Scott goes to shake it. Pow! Lucas gets him square in the mouth. Scott smiles through his arching jaw. Aching jaw. You are a pretty good actor. I'm going for the Oscar this year. But are you a pretty good skater? I'm more than pretty good, I said. I have my own skate company. Lucas pulls down his shirt, revealing a skate company tattoo. So you can sell them, but can you do a thingy on that rail? Scott points to the long handrail on the stairs. It's called a grind, bro. Can you do a grind thingy now? Are you serious? There's like 200 steps and the wheels are garbage. Hey, it's, it's too hardcore. You really think you can goad me into doing a trick like that? There's girls watching. Somebody get me my board. Wallace taps Lucas' shoulder and hands him a skateboard. Hi. Big fan. Why wouldn't you be? Clack. Lucas goes for it. A perfect ollie onto the rail. Scott and Wallace watch as Lucas disappears from sight, sparking down the endless rail. Yes. Cut back to Scott and Wallace impressed at Lucas. I don't let you do that. Wow. Cut back to Scott and Wallace, very impressed at Lucas. Wow. Cut back to Scott and Wallace. Scott's about to say wow when, boom, a fireball appears from the bottom of the stairs. Wow. He totally bailed. Yes. Fist bump. Scott smacks his forehead. I didn't get his autograph. Uh, that's a wrap, everybody. Where's Ramona? She's still here? Nah, she totally bailed. What's the deal, seriously? In Interior Wallace's apartment day. Scott slumps on the couch, phone pressed to his ear. Wallace cooks bacon in the kitchen, no pants. We hear the outgoing message. This is an automated voice messaging system. Ramona is not available. Please record your message after the beep. Hey, it's me, Scott. Again, uh, call me back, Scott Pilgrim. Um, what's the deal, seriously? Scott ambles over to the fridge and rests his head on it. Yeah, you said that last night. You know what really sucks, though? What? Everything! Come on, guy, you can't say you didn't see this coming. It was right under your nose. Wallace points to the note Ramona scribbled, which is pinned literally under Scott's nose on the refrigerator. Ramona Flowers, 212-664-7665. X, 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 X. What did you think these were? Kisses? Seven little kisses? Seven deadly X's. Wallace cocks an eyebrow. Scott slides to the floor. Why does everything have to be so complicated? Wallace crouches down to join Scott on the floor. Look, if you want something bad, you have to fight for it. Then up your game, Scott. Break out the L word. Lesbian? The other L word. Lesbians? Hey, it's love, Scott. I wasn't trying to trick you or anything. Look, if she really is the girl of your dreams, then you have to let her know. You have to overcome any and all obstacles that lie in your path. You have the spirit of a warrior, Scott. You can do it. Be with her. It's your destiny. Plus, I need you to move out. Scott's face falls completely shocked to this bombshell. What? Why? Are, are you moving in with other Scott or Jimmy or someone? Or someone. Either way, it's, I'm kind of banking on her calling you back so I don't have to evict you and feel all guilty and shit. Ringy ring. Scott and Wallace look at the phone. I'm feeling that's for you, gay. Scott picks up. A sexy non-Ramona voice replies. Hey, Scott. V? Oh, shit. It's been a long time. Yeah. A year, I think. Approximately. How are you? I'm not uh, doing so good right now. That's too bad. Still breaking heart. What? No, stop. It's been, it's been different. You have no idea. Probably not. Do you still have a girlfriend? Should I be jealous? Yes, you should. I have this totally awesome girlfriend who calls me all the time and she's America. Uh, I mean, she's American. What's her name? I'm not telling you that, Ramona. Oh. What do you know? <laughs> Uh, no. Sound like you did. I gotta go. Nice chatting with you.
Wait. Click. Scott slumps to the floor. Wallace appears over him. Okay. Everything does suck. Scott grunts. Uh, Ringy ring. Wallace grins and grabs the phone. Or does it? Scott sits bolt, sits bolt up right, expectant. Oh, hey, knives. Scott lays back down. Fuck. What's that? You're outside? Scott sits bolt upright again. Fuck. Wallace opens the door. Crack. Knives shivers outside, pale and broken looking. Is Scott here? You know what? Behind Wallace, we see Scott leap through a window, head first, glass smashes. He just left. Knives sighs. Scott sprints away in the background. Exterior street day. Scott walks fast down the street, freaked out and paranoid. He sees five X's looming above him on a pedestrian cross, on a pedestrian crossing, and quickly diverts into an exterior alley day. Scott rips the X Men patch off his jacket when, whiz, something buzzes past Scott. He looks around. Dude. Whoosh! Another blast of air whizzes by. Please. Something sweeps off his feet. He's pissed off now. I'm not really in the mood. Schwa! Something slices the air in front of Scott. Okay, enough! Scott punches the air in front of him. Hits something. A diminu- diminu- diminutive words. Dirty blonde dressed in a punk rock. Kung Fu getup lands on the ground with a thump. She spins to face Scott. You punched me in the boob. Prepare to die. Obviously. Listen, I've had it today. Can we not do this right now? Alternate number one. Sorry. Love to postpone, darling, but I just cashed my last rain check. What's that from? My brain. Well, whatever this is about, can you wait until I'm in the right frame of mind? Alternate number two. Nuh-uh. This is one nightmare you can't wake up from. Wait, am I asleep now? No. So technically this is not a nightmare. Right. So how can I not wake up if I'm not actually asleep? Don't question me. Scott shakes his head baffled. Well, I'm really, really not up for this, whatever it is. Okay, little chicken, then I'll see you later. But you won't see me because I'll be deadly serious next time. What? Never mind. Path. The mystery attacker vanishes. Scott looks to the sky. Oh man, someone help me. Exterior. Bloor Street. Day. Scott is in his usual payphone, dialing Stacy frantically. It's Scott. What did he do this time? No, it's Scott. It's actually me. What did you do this time? I didn't do anything. It's it's everyone else that's crazy. Look, um, I need to talk to you. I'm having a meltdown or whatever. Are you still working? I'm literally about to leave. Cool, I'm coming in. Scott hangs up the phone and walks two steps into the second cup continuous. Scott approaches the counter. Stacy has her back turned. I think I'll make it a decaf today. Stacy turns around, revealing herself to be Julie. Gosh. Scott Pilgrim. Ah! What did you do with my sister? Stacy taps on the window outside, mouthing that she has to go. Scott turns back to Julie, not happy. What can I get you? Is there anywhere you don't work? They're called jobs. Something of Bleep. that you wouldn't know anything about. And by the way, I can't believe you Bleep. asked a Ramona out. I specifically told you not to Bleep. do that. Note to concern reader, every time Julie says fuck, a black bar comes out of her mouth and the sound is bleeped. How do you do that with your mouth? Never tell me that. What do you have to say for yourself? Uh, can I get a caramel macchiato? Maybe it's high. Bleep. <laughs> you took a look in a mirror before you wreak havoc on another girl. Me wreak havoc? Truly points at the Clash, a demon head poster behind the counter with, con- with the concert dates at the bottom. Bleep. Speaking of. Bleep. Which I hear the girl you kicked your heart in the, oh, kicked your heart in the ass is walking the streets of Toronto again. So can I pick up my coffee over here? Scott retreats away from Julie and bumps right into Ramona. They share an awkward moment. She looks at the floor. Sorry, that got a little crazy last night. Yeah, you kind of disappeared. Yeah, I do that. Listen, I know it's hard to be around me sometimes. I'll understand if you don't want to hang anymore. No, no, I want to hang the whole evil ex-boyfriend thing. No biggie. Exes. I mean, I know it's early days, but I don't think 
anything can really get in the way of I ah shit. Scott hides behind Ramona as a little figure emerges from the steamed milk mist of the copy shop. The singer from the Clash of Demon Head has seemingly stepped out of the poster. Envy Adams, 23, fun fact, kicked Scott's heart in the ass. The icy platinum blonde fashionista walks towards Scott. It's my ex. The big one? Scott nods. Leon stare down between Envy and Ramona. I'm gonna... Excuse me. Ramona goes to order coffee, leaving Envy to fix on Scott. Your hair's getting shaggy. Reverse, Scott is instantly wearing his dorky hat. Yeah? So, that Ramona? Yeah? Okay, I'm jealous. You're jealous? I'm allowed. Um, you left me for that cocky pretty boy. You've never even seen him. Yeah, I know. Uh, you left me for a guy I've never even seen. Maybe you'll see him soon. We're playing at Lee's Palace. You guys should, like, so totally come. That's so not going to happen. Great. So you're on the list. Envy disappears into the cappuccino miss. Ramona returns. Caramel. Beep. For. Bleep. Pilgrim. Pronounce Scott. Exterior Toronto Residential Street Day. Scott and Ramona walk side by side, sipping their coffees. So... That was Nat? No, that was Envy. So, what did you guys talk about? She's totally jealous of you. Envy's jealous? How about that? <laughs> how, how about that? What happened with the two of you? Do you mind if we don't get into that right now? She went to move to Montreal because she missed her best friend, this guy, Todd. And two weeks later, you heard they were sleeping together, I guess. I dated a Todd once. That didn't end well either. I can see how it sucks. Having the past come back to haunt you. Is it wrong that I try not to think about it? You don't think about it. How warm my place is right now? Ramona stops and kisses him. Interior Wallace's apartment night. Scott lies between Wallace and other Scott on the futon. And you didn't bang her? Are you gay? I, could, I couldn't stop thinking about my stupid ex-girlfriend. A bleary Jimmy sits up between them all. Is that the Uma Thurman movie? Look, Scott, just because Envy's back in town doesn't make it not over. Double negative. Tricky. It's over. Move on. Word. Hmm. Scott stands. No pants. Music swells. Right. I'm gonna let her toy with me. From this moment on, I will, I will think of Envy Adams no more. <laughs> Into your Stephen Stills house day. I have distressing news. A deadly serious Stephen Stills addresses Kim, Scott, and young Neil. Ramona lounges on the couch. <laughs> Lord. Is the news that we suck because I really don't think I can take it. No. The Clash of Demon Head are doing a secret show tomorrow night, and Envy asked us to open for them. I hate you. A gig is a gig is a gig is a gig. It's a gig. It's a gig. Maybe you can put your history aside until we get through this thing, you know, for the band. For the band. For the band. Can we do our own secret shows? For the band. We still do our own secret shows? All our shows are secret shows. We're doing it. G-Man might be there. We play the next round of the battle Saturday. We need to get some buzz going. We need groundswell. We need stalkers. Stills paces past the window to reveal knives chow outside. Crash zoom on her tear from face. Pressed against the window. Totally crushed to see Scott cuddling with Ramona. What would, what would you do if your ex was in a band and they wanted you to open for them? If, if my ex was in a band? Yeah. It might be a little awkward, but maybe it's the grown-up thing to do. Yeah. We're all adults, right? Interior drugs smart. The evening knives frantically rifles through racks of hair dye and rants furiously into her cell phone. He's dating this stupid-ass hipster chick. I hate his stupid guts. I'm going to disembowel him. 
interior Knives' bedroom evening. Knives stands on her bed and continues ranting at Tamara. He only likes her because she's old. She's probably like 25, just some fat ass white woman. <laughs> I think you mentioned she was fat. Interior Knives bathroom evening. Tamara helps Knives color her hair under the bathtub spigot. She's got a head start. I didn't even know there was good music until like two months ago, a month ago, okay? This really burns. We should rinse. Uh, I mean, he knew I was cool. He tried, but he thought I was too young, so he tried to find someone cool but old. She's cool? I thought she was fat. Well, she thinks she's cool. This is all her fault. Why? It Tamara must be her fault. Tamara turns the faucet on and rinses Knives' hair. It must be her fault, obviously. It's just a twist of fate or whatever, isn't it? Star-crossed lover is born too late. Knives looks in the mirror. Her hair is exactly like Ramona. Oh my god. I look so good! <laughs> Knives throws a long scarf on, looking sexy, eyes narrowing. Scott Pilgrim destroyed my heart, but I know how to get him back. Push into Knives how? as she plots. Tamara pops in the frame. We how? see a text. We see a text message t t typing on screen. Young Neil, it's Knives. Oh my effing god, you're so hot. Exterior Lee's Palace Night. A huge line of two cool youth snakes outside a rock venue. A sign reads, The Clash of Demon Head. Sold out. We hear loud music blasting through the open doors. Interior Lee's palace continues. The loud music stops abruptly. Sex for bomb. Bow on stage. Thank you. We were sex for bomb. Wallace and other and other Scott clap and cheer. Drunk. The other snobbish kids in the audience shrug and, dis and disperse. We got some merch out the back. So. Okay. Bar now. Interior Lee's palace later. A Disillusioned sex bomb hang with Ramona at the bar. Level with me. Did we suck? I don't know. Did you? She has to go. She knows we suck. Ramona excuses herself. Interior Lee's palace ladies' bathroom moments later. Ramona does her eyeliner. She looks in the mirror to see two images of herself staring back. Or is it? Knives Chow, 17, single, white, Asian, with, identi with identical hair, clothes, and makeup, standing next to Ramona, looking hot. Hey, Ramona. Hey. Ramona exits, confused. Knives follows. What the hell? Interior Lee's palace moments later. Ramona and Knives exit the bathroom together. Scott breaks into a cold sweat. Knives shoots Scott a sultry look. Hey, Scott. Knives heads into young Neil's arms at the other end of the bar. Scott struggles with something resembling jealousy. What the hell? Look who Knives is hanging out with. Who is that girl again? Scott dated her. Briefly, briefly. I bet young Neil would date her even brieflier. How old is she? A wheel of fortune spins inside Scott's head with selections such as, it was nothing, and she was nobody. The wheel sticks between, I gotta pee, and who, her? I gotta pee on her. I mean, I, <laughs> I, mean, I gotta pee. Pee time. Pee time. Interior Lee's palace men's bathroom moments later, Scott washes his hands and looks up to see two Scots staring back, one with fringed hair and a wicked glare. Scott whips around. He's alone. Spooky music begins. Interior Lee's palace moments later, a freaked out Scott returns to the group. The lights dim and the stage fills with twisting blue tendrils of smoke. The clash of demon head materializes, envying the long black coat, Knives screams her teen brains out. The bass player steps into the light, no longer shrouded in dry ice. He cuts a handsome striking rock god figure. That guy on bass, that's Todd? I know. Oh, yeah? You know? Oh, yeah? Todd flips his fringe from his eyes, stares at Scott. Todd Ingram, 25, Evil X number 3. Fun fact, ninth degree vegan. Oh, no. Envy lets her coat slip off, revealing a stunning figure. Oh, yeah! Interior Lee's palace later, sex babam, knives, and Ramona hang near the backstage doors. Oh my god, just oh my god. Man, he had to see them live. <laughs> They're so much better live. Oh. I think I'm gonna go throw up. Julie opens the backstage door and hops. I can't believe I'm even saying this. 
but Envy Adams would like all of you to come backstage. All of us? Did I? Bleep. The group shuffles backstage. Scott hangs his head like a condemned man. How do you know Envy? Scott dated her. Knives makes a face that looks like this. Uh, less, more than, to the left. Two dots in, per, right on top of each other, and then, a, and then an O, and then four exclamation points. Interior Lee's Palace, ratty backstage area night. Sex with Bob lounge on a couch on one side of the room. Envy Todd and Julie lounge on a couch across from them. Knives in shock as she thinks a thousand thoughts. Envy burns a hole through Scott. Everyone else feels awkward. Hey, Ramona. Hey, Todd. Been a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think we should get out of here. How was the chore? You played with the Pixies? You're a superstar now. It, yeah, it's not something I can really put into words. Um, Envy, I read your blog. Todd and Julie glare at knives. So, Scott and Ramona, eh? What of it? You guys are a cute couple, you know? You suit each other. Really, you do. Steven? So, Steven. what's your ulterior motive, Envy, in, in general? She doesn't need ulterior motive, Steven. She's got to ride up and spin. You're my role model, Envy. Just saying, cute couple. I like your outfit, Ramona. Affordable. I was going to say, Envy, get those jeans in New York. They're... I'm talking to Ramona right now. Ramona lives in New York. I was just there. We played at the Chaos Theater for Gideon. You know him, right? Scott looks right at Ramona. She's about to answer when Knife stands up, points at Envy, and screams, I've kissed the lips that have kissed you! Envy nods at Todd. He punches Knife square in the jaw. O M F G. Scott jumps to his feet, facing off against Todd Ingram. Knives! Young Neil rushes to Knives' aid. Scott boils. Todd smirks. That's right. I'm not afraid to hit a girl. I'm a rock star. You punched the highlights out of her hair. Angle on Knives. Her hair is black and plain as before. You punched the highlights out of her hair. You're incorrigible. I don't know the meaning of the word. Young Neil escorts Knives out. Todd sits back down like nothing happened. Scott's face is a bright side of rage. So are you guys doing anything fun while you're in town? Fun? <laughs> in Toronto? That is it! You cocky cock! You'll pay for your crimes against humanity! Scott leaps across the table and swings a punch at Todd. Todd thrusts a hand out and tel telekinetically freezes Scott in the air. Scott hovers, grasping his neck, choking. Todd's hair magically forms into a fo faux hawk. Okay, okay, my, my neck, your hair? Didn't you know? Todd's vegan. Not a big deal. Todd telekinetically hurls Scott through the club's wall. Ramona and Sex Vivant peer through the newly made hole in the wall to see Scott sprawled on some trash bags. He tries to keep cool despite being in a lot of pain. No kidding. Anyone could be vegan. Ovo lacto vegetarian, maybe. Of a what? I partake not in the meat, nor the breast milk, or ovum of any creature that has a face. Short answer, being vegan just makes you better than most people. Bingo. Todd lifts up Scott telekinetically and throws him miles into the air. Scott sails out of shot and into space. Hey man, question. I was wondering, how does not eating dairy products give you psychic powers? You know how you only use 10% of your brain? Well, it's because the other 90% is filled up with curds and whey. Did you learn that at the Vegan Academy? Go ahead and get snippy, baby. If you knew the science, maybe I'd listen to a word you're saying. Ah, Scott returns to Earth with a thump. He moans in pain while the others bicker. Ramona helps Scott to his feet. If I peed my pants, would you pretend it got wet from the rain? It's not raining. 
Oh, uh, how about you give me the cliff notes on how and why you ended up dating this a-hole? Is it really that important right now? Um, is there a key element in his backstory that can help me in a critical moment of not dying? Yes. A brief, scrappy, animated flashback of a young Todd and Ramona. I was only dating Lucas until the minute Todd walks by. I guess that's not very nice, but I was used to being kind of like that. Young Ramona shoves young Lucas down a hill and starts making out with young Todd. We hated everyone. We wrecked stuff. Nobody cared. Young Ramona and young Todd wrecked stuff. Nobody cares. He punched a hole in the moon for me. It was pretty crazy. Young Todd punches a hole in the moon. It's pretty crazy. A week and a half later, he told me his dad was sending him to Vegan Academy, so I dumped him. Does that all help? Does that help you at all? The flashback ends. Scott only fixates on one aspect. Have you dumped everyone you've ever been with? You've never been the dumpy. Ramona shrugs. Look, I've dabbled with being a bitch. It's part of the reason I moved here. I was really hoping to put it all behind me. Todd appears behind Ramona, ready for another round. We have unfinished business. I and he. Scott stands up, sort of ready for another round. He and me. Don't you talk to me about grammar. I dislike you, capiche? Understand? Tell it to the cleaning lady on Monday. What? Because you'll be dust by Monday. Um. Because I'll be pulverizing you in two seconds and the cleaning lady cleans up. Dust. She dusts. Sorry, so what's on Monday? Because it's Friday now and she has weekends off. So <laughs> Monday, right? Right? Basically, you can't win this fight and you'll have to give up on this girl because uh, Todd's going to kill you. It used to be so nice. Scott charges at Todd, who psych throws him back into the club. We hear a distant crumb. Stills calls through the hole. Uh... Going to pizza pizza for a slice. Call us when you're done. Uh, oh, he'll be done real soon. Sex with bomb skulks away. Envy grins at Ramona. Wicked. Sorry, baby. Crummy way to end things, I know. Suddenly, the bass line from Final Fantasy II rumbles through the walls. Todd calls to a roadie. Get me my bass. A good one. Interior Lee's palace continuous. Scott stands in an mm -hmm. elephant's graveyard of plastic cups and bottles, picking the hell out of his base. Amp pegged to ten. Todd, Todd Ingram levitates, floating towards Scott with his base. You're going down. Vegan style. Todd lands in front of Scott. Base off. Base off. Picks. Strike string. Todd easily outbases Scott, shredding him into oblivion. The enormous reverb launches club debris towards Scott. Reverb is hurting my soul! Scott slides across the floor and slams right into the wall. Todd levitates. Fauxhawk rising. He hovers next to him. That's right, Pilgrim. I actually know how to play bass. Todd detunes his bass and delivers a death note that blows Scott right through the stage wall. Interior Lee's palace ratty backstage area continues. Scott crashes into a backstage food table. Todd floats towards him, savoring the kill. Envy appears beside him with a smirk. I can read your thoughts. Your base hand is badly injured. You're through. Scott turns around on his knees, cringing, holding a cup of milky looking coffee in either hand as a piece of off as a peace offer. What say we drink to my memory? Fair trade blend with soy milk? I'm sorry, but that's pathetic. Dude! I can see in your mind's eye that you poured half and half into one of these coffees in an attempt to make me break vegan edge. I'll take the one with the soy. Thanks, tool. Todd floats to the ground, takes one of the cups, and drinks. Actually, I poured soy in this cup, but thought real hard about pouring it in that one, you know? In my mind's eye or whatever. What are you talking about? You just drank half and half, baby. Two trendy police types bust in through the wall, making two more holes and pointing their fingers like deadly weapons. Freeze, vegan police! Todd Ingram, you're under arrest for vegan violation. 
code number 827 and buy them in of half and half. That's bull roar. No vegan diet, no vegan powers. But this is a first time offense. Don't I get three strikes? Vegan police officer number two flips open his code violation book. At 12.27 a.m. on February 1st, you knowingly ingested gelato. Gelato isn't vegan? Milk and eggs, bitch. On April 4th, 7.30 p.m., you partook a plate of chicken parmesan. And they gasped, disgusted. Chicken isn't vegan? The de-veganizing ray hit him. The vegan police blast Todd with arcs of power from their finger guns. Todd's faux hawk deflates into a bowl cut. No! Scott rises into a stance to deliver his killer line. You once were a vegan, but now you will be gone. Vegan? Scott headbutts Todd, exploding him. Boom! Scott dusts himself off as coins rain down. Envy stares, jaw ajar. Um, sorry, I guess. Sorry? You just headbutted my boyfriend so hard he burst. Well, you kicked my heart in the ass, so I guess we're even, Natalie. No one calls me that anymore. Maybe they should. Now let's get out of here. A battle-worn Scott limps through the hole in the wall. Ramona follows, shooting Envy a look on the way out. I mean, way to end things. I know. Envy blinks, in shock. Julie pops into shot. For the record, I'm so pissed off at you right now. Shut the fuck up, Julie. Interior pizza pizza tonight. Sex, babam, Wallace, and other Scott munch pizza slices. Ramona and Scott on the fringes. It's an odd mood. Envy Adams. I hate that bitch so much. I kind of love her. Yeah, that Todd guy was cool too. And hot. I liked him. Scott sighs and holds a, whole, a cold Coke Zero on his forehead. Are you okay? Uh-huh. Are you sure about that? Do I look like I'm not okay? Scott does not look okay. Stills cops. <clears throat> We're still going to the after show, right? I'm not sure it's going to be much of a party. I think it's the third of the band just went poom. Cool bands never go to their own after parties. It's just the desperate people trying to rub elbows with label guys. Then why would we... Oh... Neil, you down? Neil's at the counter with a catatonic knife. He shrugs. Scott, you're in, right? Do you want to go? I kind of almost died back there, so... I'm not saying I want to go. Hey, we can totally go. I'll do whatever you want to do. So let's go. Scott takes another bite. Other Scott whispers to Wallace. Are Scott and Ramona fighting? Not my knowledge. Uh, I mean, not with fist. Uh, yet. Uh, exterior after party night. The whole gang trudge to the after party. Scott limps a bit, lagging behind. Ramona falls back with him. We really don't have to go to this thing. It'll probably be a bad scene all around, and we've already had a full night. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Just... It's just... It's just... Uh, well, not the fighting harder and harder battles for your love is getting old or anything, but... Have you ever dated someone who wasn't a total ass? So far, you're not a total ass. Short ass? If it makes you feel better, you're the nicest guy I've dated. Please. Is that good? It's what I need right now. But not later. Scott, I don't have all the answers. I just like to live in the moment if I can. Yeah. I just like to live. Scott and Ramona enter a big, fartsy, artsy warehouse. Interior, fartsy, artsy after party continues. Okay, I know Todd was bad news, but are you saying Envy wasn't? Ha we all have baggage. The baggage doesn't try to kill me every five minutes. What did, what did you do to your ex-boyfriends to make them so insane? Exes. Whatever. No breakup is painless. Someone always gets hurt. What about you and that girl, Knives? Knives? Who broke up with who? I believe... I broke up with her. And she was cool with that? Knives with young Neil now. She's totally cool with it. 
They pass knives and young Neil. She seemingly has no interest in her date and simply stares at Scott lovingly. You sure about that? Yeah, she's very mature for her age. It, it was a very healthy breakup. We all, we're all peaches and gravy. We hear an off-screen distant from that. And what about you and Kim? They pass Kim. She's also staring at Scott, not lovingly. Me and Kim? I can barely remember. Why? Is it important? Hey, you want to know every, everything about my past, dude? I was just... It was just, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, it was high school. She had freckles. It was cool, I guess. Is that it? Yeah, it kind of ended. We changed. Scott and Ramona have reached the bar at the party. That's really the whole story? Okay, I had to fight a dude to get with her. I fought a crazy 80-foot-tall purple-suited dude, and I had to fight 96 guys to get to him, too. He was flying and shooting lightning bolts from, my eye, from his eyes. He was totally awesome, and I kicked him so far, he saw a curvature of, of the earth. Does that make you feel any better? Well, now you are being a total ass. Welcome to the club. In the back glass of the bar, Scott sees his reflection. Fringed hair, wicked glare. He catches himself. Sorry, I'm not usually like this. Hey, don't worry. I don't know what I'm like anymore. I guess this whole ex-boy, whole ex-boyfriend's thing is really messing with my head. Exes. What do you keep saying? Pow! A foot appears out of nowhere and kicks Scott in the head, sending him flying across the dance floor. Scott looks up at his opponent, opponent the mystery attacker. Girl from earlier? Foxy? Scott gets up, the three square off in a triangle. You know this girl? Oh boy, does she know me. What is she talking about? He really doesn't know? <laughs> You and her? Roxy Richard, 23, fourth evil ex. Sapphic aggressive. It was just a phase. Just a phase? A sexy phase? I didn't think it would count. It meant nothing. It meant nothing? I was just a little bi-curious. Well, honey, I'm a little bi-furious. Roxy throws a scorpion kick at Scott's face. Ramona catches her foot mid-air. Roxy flips out of the hold. Do that again, and I will end you. Back off, Hasbian. If Gideon can't have you, no one can. The League hath spoken. The girls square off, clearing the busy dance floor. The Gideon best get his pretentious ass up here, because I'm about to kick yours out of the Great White North. You unbelievable bitch. Ramona pulls a large hammer from her purse. Believe it. An embarrassed Scott watches with the rest of the crowd. Wallace? Uh-huh? This is happening, right? Uh huh. I mean, this is live. Oh yeah, kick her in the balls. With blinding speed, Roxy slips her belt off and whips a razor-sharp flying guillotine belt buckle at Ramona. Ramona cartwheels as the buckle sails between her legs and smashes into a disco ball. Mirrored shards fly everywhere. Pow! Rocky van- Roxy vanishes as Ramona swings the hammer at her. It smashes a speaker. Sound on one side of the room cuts out. Ramona turns around just in time to see Roxy's deadly belt sailing towards her. She blocks with the hammer. The belt wraps around it. Roxy hurls the hammer out the window. I'm sending you I'm back. Send- I'm sending you back to Gideon in a thousand pieces, you slag. Ramona springs off of, of off of various pieces of furniture, leaping towards Roxy and punching her in the face. Roxy reels and slams into the wall, leaving a dent in it. I'd rather be dead than go back. He's a creep. You're a bitch, and you all deserve each other. Give it a rest, Ramona. This is a league game. Meaning? Roxy points an accusing finger at the mortified Scott. Meaning your precious Scott must defeat me with his own fists, or possibly feet. I'm not sure if I can hit a girl. They're soft. You don't have a choice. Ramona positions Scott into a fighting stance as as Roxy charges with deadly intent. Ramona puppeteers Scott into a furious volley of punches on Roxy. She staggers, winces. Fight your own battles, lazy ass! Pow! Roxy disappears, then reappears between Scott and Ramona, kicking them apart with the splits. Roxy then kicks Scott into the ceiling. He lands. He lands hard on the floor. Every pilgrim reaches the end of his journey, some sooner than others. Roxy lifts her leg over her head, preparing to stop her boot of death on Scott's head. She grins at Ramona. Your BF's about to get f in the B. Her, her weak points the back of her knees. What? How does that work? Whenever we were making out, I... Okay. 
As Roxy's leg descends, Scott reaches up with one finger and lightly tickles the back of Roxy's knee. Graphic, tickle, tickle. Oh! Roxy falls still in the splits, throbbing with orgasmic meltdown. Scott watch it, watches as Roxy giggles between spasms. You'll never be able to do this to her! Roxy screams in ecstasy before exploding into coins. A spent Scott is left standing in the middle of the room. The party starts up again, a wave of gossip spreading around the room. People text furiously and point fingers at Scott. Scott flushes red and retreats back to the bar. Ramona f- follows tentatively. The gossip echoes around them. So... Two gin and tonics, please. I thought you didn't drink. Only on special occasions. Why? Did you want one? Scott swigs down his drink. Ramona tries to light things. I guess we really don't know that much about each other, do we? Scott seems immediately drunk. Maybe you should just give me a list of all your exes, so at least I know who's going to beat my ass into the next ground next. Oh, like a handy little laminate or something? Let me see if I can find one. Maybe we could exchange our information. Scott has already downed his second drink. Uh, just out of sheer curiosity and concern for my mortal well-being, is there anyone at this party you haven't slept with? Hey! 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 Every girl and guy at the party. Ramona stops, looks hurt, she touches her hair. I really think we should split. As in, get out of here, or as in, split, split? I'd hope you could figure that out. Or did you miss the part where I saved your ass? Well, how could I not? I feel like we just washed our sexy laundry in public. Dirty laundry. You're drunk. I've had, like, one, one drink. Well, I'm sorry I cared. I don't enjoy all this, Scott. In fact, I'm sick of it. I thought you might be more understanding. Just... You're just another evil ex-boyfriend waiting to happen. Ramona walks off and loudly announces, And yes, there is someone at this party I haven't slept with. You. Ramona leaves. Another crescendo of gossip echoes around the room. Scott's friends gather around in a pity party. But then Ramona returns, handing Scott a laminated list. P.S. Here's your stupid list. Ramona exits proper. Scott looks at the list. It reads, Patel, Lee, Ingram, Richard, Katayanagi twins, Gideon. Who the hell are the Katayanagi twins? Oh, you don't know? Interior Stephen Stills' house night. Stills flips to hand-drawn sketches of the Katayanagis. Identical Asian twins dressed like pretentious new wave fops. They're the next band in the battle. They are badass. We reveal a grim... Terse Scott playing a do- doomy bass line. The rehearsal room feels empty without knives or Ramona. Ramona dated twins? At the same time? You know what? I don't know and I don't want to know. Good. You know how I feel about girls cock blocking the rock. Good. I, I play better in a bad mood. It's going to be an issue, though. Young Neil can fill in for you. It's not an issue. You, you know bands. I know battles. We got it covered. Well, we'd understand if you didn't want to take part. Not only do I want to take part, I want to take them apart. Okay. I'm getting tingles. Whoa. Exterior, the Ninth Circle Night. Sex bob and Young Neil load their gear at the venue. Okay. We're doomed. Oh. Flyers cover the outside walls of another rock venue. T-I-B-B, Sex bob the Katianagi twins, Amp versus Amp. Two bands enter, one band leaves. The uh, flyer needs more exclamation points. Oh, we are going to get killed. Come on, you're on stage in five. Aren't the Katamaras or whatever on first? I think you're both on first. Wait, Amp versus Amp? We're going on stage at the same time? That's impossible. Actually, no. Interior of the Ninth Circle stage night. Two stages sit on either side of the auditorium. On one, a monolithic wall of elk amplifiers. On the other, Sex bob with their dinky lame brand amps behind them. Okay, my bad. Your bad is saying my bad. Sex bob stare out at the Katianagi amps. Sweating behind their instruments, Stills looks into the audience positioned between the bands, a legion of identical indie twins. Uh, we shouldn't be here. We shouldn't even be here. Stills tries to run. Scott grabs him and pulls him back. 
Come on, man. I put, I put aside my problems for the music. If I can do that, we can do anything. Did you speak to Ramona then? What? No, I haven't seen her since the other night. Oh, she's totally here. Kim points to Ramona in the crowd. She's totally there. Her hair is now the brightest green. She stands next to a nondescript mystery geek in blazer and black rim glasses. They're chatting. She looks happy. Scott turns bleak again. They're... Yeah. Scott... Oh, sorry. No. Scott, not that I care, but you should talk to her before she's gone. Thanks, Kim. And I really don't care. Scott nods at Kim's advice. He looks back to the crowd to find the mystery geek staring right at him. Then, disorienting, lights and lasers flash on the opposite stage. A wall of feedback builds. The Katianagi twins appear, sliding on stage behind their respective keyboard stands. Kyle Katianagi, 23, is very serious in Japanese. Ken Katianagi, 23, is serious and very Japanese. Scott, Steven Stills, and Kim share a nervous look. Okay, gang. Can we do this? I mean, we can do this, right? Right. Scott? Scott is distracted again by the mystery geek staring at him. Scott! Kyle Katianagi hits a single note on the keyboard, blasting an enormous wave of sound at Sex Bob. It's so loud that it shakes the foundations and rips the lightning, the lighting rig from the ceiling, leaving a huge hole in the roof. The crowd cheers. He brought the house down. Now, in open-air venue, snow falls onto the stage. An earth-shaking bass note blows the dust off Sex Bob. Scott and Stills get into battle position. Scott screams. We are Sex bob We are here to make you think about death and get sad and stuff. One, two, three, four. Sex bob rock out. Their sound blowing a mass of snow towards the Katianagi. Noises, animal noises, the creme de la creme, the feminine abyss, and I'm reaching my threshold, staring at the truth till I'm blind. My body's stupid, staring at putrid, spreading out music in the raw sewage, reaching my threshold, staring at the truth till I'm blind. No, that's too early. I thrash hard, I thrash hard, DJ For once, they sound awesome. They were always awesome. Kyle looks at Ken. They share a nod. Ken turns their amps up to the Japanese character for 11. Their waveforms transfer the swirling snow into a two-headed white dragon. Katia and Nagi slam their, their moves. Heavy... Weirdness explodes from the amps. The dragon blows a blast of snowy, fi snowy fire that blows Sex Bob off the stage. The crowd erupts into cheers. Scott, Kim, and Stills lie in a heap under their instruments. Let's break up now and get her over with. We're screwed the approach in front of Gideon Graves. We're done. Gideon? Is here? Where? Stills points to the mystery geek who smirks and whispers in Ramona's ear. This is Gideon Graves, 37, asshole. That's Gideon? Scott's eyes reflect Ramona's hair and turn green. He struggles to his feet. The crowd slowly stops clapping as Scott pulls Stills to his feet, then helps Kim up. All right, let's do this. Kim, inspired by Scott's new hardcore attitude, comes in heavy on the kick drum. Boom, 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 boom. Heads, heads not in time as Sex bob rock out. Their waveforms tramp transform a mass of snow into a green-eyed yeti. The Katianagis fight back with their future sounds and their sonic dragons stalks towards Sex bob slinking on perfect beat with the Katianagis spooky music. The yeti and the dragons clash at center stage, fighting in time to the music. Scott and Stills bring their pick hands down like fierce punches. The yeti brings its fist down on the dragon. Sex bob hammer down the final note. The yeti picks up the dragon and throws it at the Katianagi twins, exploding them and their amps into coins. Plus, 999 rocking. That was epic. The crowd goes bazooki. A disembodied Scott head appears hovering next to Scott. Scott looks for Ramona in the crowd, but she and Gideon are gone. Scott hands his base to young Neil. Scott, what are you doing? Getting alive. Scott swipes the Scott head and jumps into the still applauding crowd. He can't find Ramona, but comes upon Knives standing alone in her, her homemade sex bob t-shirt. I just came to see the show. I'm not even stalking you. Knives' unusually composed demeanor gives Scott pause. Seem, uh, different? Knives shrugs. Different. 
I feel like I know stuff now. Scott and Knives lock eyes. Scott suddenly spots a flash of green hair exiting the building. Ramona. Scott follows. Knives watches him go, eyes narrowing. Exterior, the ninth circle, night. Scott chases Ramona down the street outside the venue. Ramona, I have something I need to tell you. Yeah, I have something to... Great, listen, um, I know you just play mysterious and aloof to avoid getting hurt. I know you have reasons for not wanting to talk about your past. I want you to know I, I don't care about any of that stuff. Why? Because I'm in lesbians with you. What? I really, really mean it. Oh, okay. What did you want to tell me? That we have to break up. What? Yeah, it's not going to work out. Oh, uh, okay. A sleek black 61 Lincoln Continental pulls up behind. It's Gideon. I just, I can't help myself around him. That's the bad news. Gideon Graves appears behind Scott with Stills and Kim in tow. The Lincoln parks. A driver opens the passenger door. The good news, Scotty, is I'm officially loving the sex bombs. Bob bomb. Three-piece rock outfit with a semi-attractive female drummer? <laughs> Music to my ear holes. Scott glowers. Ramona looks at the floor. Stills is gaga. Text. An arrow points to Stills. Cra crouch. Caption. P. You know, I'm not even going to wait to see how you guys do in the final. I'm signing you right here, right now. Three album deal. Gideon produces a contract and clicks a pen. See? I'm not such a bad guy after all. Scott grabs the contract and throws it onto the sidewalk. You think we're going to sell our souls to you? Well, then guess. We hear scribbling. Stills has picked up the contract and is furiously signing it using Scott's back. Kim shrugs and signs it too before trying to hand it back to Scott. Uh -uh. I, I can't be part of the band with this douche in charge. Scotty, buddy, can I just say keep your emotions in check? Don't let what's past screw you up in the future. Scott watches Ramon again into the Continental. She rolls the mirrored window up so Scott stares at his own reflection. People need to hear us, Scott. Then you're going to need to find someone else to play bass. A cop, a meek young Neil <laughs> slides into view base in hand. <laughs> Looks like we're all set. Young Neil signs the contract. There are handshakes all around. Gideon turns to Scott and pats him on the shoulder. Oh, and Scott, we should really be thanking each other. I mean, if it wasn't for me, you would have never been with Ramona. And if it wasn't for you, she would have never been back with me. So I guess it all shakes out. Gideon walks around to the driver's side of the Lincoln. And hey, the whole League of Evil X's thing. I was in a dark place when I put that together. Forgiven? Gideon disappears in the Lincoln and drives off and sex with bomb drift away. Scott stands alone. He slaps his head. I said lesbians. Interior of the bus, Gideon's Lincoln night. Scott sits on the bus alone, thinking about Ramona. Ramona sits expressionless in the back of Gideon's car. Scott tries desperately to think positive. A smiling Gideon saddles closer to Ramona. Scott walks forlornly down an empty street and bumps his head on a telephone pole. Funk. Oh, God, why? Exterior of the park, night, day, night. Scott sits on the swings, staring straight ahead. Night turns to day, day turns to night. Scott remains in the exact same position. Was she really the one? Scott looks over to see Stacy on the swing next to him. What? I mean, did you really see a future with this girl? Like, with jetpacks? Stacy stands to go. Give Scott a hug. Time heals all wounds, little brother. Maybe next time let's not date a girl with 11 evil ex-boyfriends. Seven? Uh, well, that's not so bad. Stacy heads off. Scott looks at the camera. Interior walls his apartment night. Scott enters, flicks the light on, gets a shot. Ah! Turn off the light! Scott flicks the light up over pitch black. Okay, presumably... You just saw someone's junk. I apologize for that. Sorry. Is that uh, other Scott or Jimmy or someone? Or someone? Chris. It's Chris. It's all right. Interior Wallace's apartment later, Scott sits in the chair wrapped in a blanket. Some guy lies in Scott's usual futon spot wearing Wallace's monogram rope. Wallace hands Scott Coco. Scott, you know I love you, but I'm going to need my own bed tonight. It's for sex. Right. 
I may need it for the rest of the week too. Right. And you. Maybe you could move in with Ramona. Scott stares deep into his cocoa and shakes his head. You Gideon. Oh, that sucks. But you know, it's probably just because he's he's better than you. Scott nods. He'll probably have better hair. Yeah. Scott nods. Either way, I think the fight's over. Scott nods. You can either uh, sleep on the floor or you get somewhere else to stay. Or... I got you muffs and blinkers in case this might happen. Wallace produces earmuffs and a sleep mask. Thanks. Ringy ring. Scott stares at the phone. Some guy picks up. It's for Scott. Hello? Hey, pal. Just wanted to say I feel terrible about earlier. I don't want any hard feelings, so I figured why not be the beggar man and give you a call. Is Ramona with you? Interior Gideon's lair continuous. Gideon appears to sit on some kind of throne. He calls off. <laughs> I don't know. Are you with me? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, buddy. Gonna be all right. Interior Wallace's apartment continuous. No, oh, I just spilled coke on my crotch. Sure you did. Well, as you know, I'm opening a new Chaos Theater in Toronto, and the Sex Bombs are playing at our grand opening tonight, and it would feel really weird if all of us weren't there. They just did a sound check and acoustics in here and are amazing. Yeah, uh, maybe I'll see you there. I hope so, amigo. I don't want any more bad blood between exes. What do you say? Hmm. Okay, leaders. Click. What a perfect asshole. Scott turns, alarmed. Reveal Wallace on the other cordless. Forget what I said earlier. Finish him. Exterior streets of Toronto night. Snow blows around a steely-eyed Scott as he stomps towards a group of des desolated warehouse near the water. A lone hipster kid smokes a cigarette, leaning against a warehouse. Wall. Password. Password. Scott shrugs. Whatever. The hipster cool. kid. The hipster kid waves Scott in. Interior warehouse night. The warehouse is empty. Scott follows the sound of music to a gated elevator. Two hipster kids guard the elevator. Second password. Scott gives the slightest shrug. Cool. Scott steps into the elevator. So far, so good. Interior chaos theater continuous. Scott exits the elevator and steps into Gideon's underground layer of cool shit and the chaos. The chaos theater. All hipster kids have gathered in one spot of ultimate snobbery. Their legion. Wearing identical outfits, Chuck Taylor, skinny jeans, Como holds court among them. Well, I mean, their first album is way better than their first album. Scott pushes through the idiot whore, the old hordes. Sex with Bomb are playing on stage, now using sweet brand amps. Young Neil on bass still sees Scott walking by as they finish a song. Scott. Scott pauses, looking up at his former bandmate. Let it go. Don't give him the satisfaction. What if I want the satisfaction? Well, then you're doomed. Scott Pilgrim! Scott turns to see Gideon sitting on a throne of cool atop a black velvet VIP pyramid. Ramona kneels at his side. Mm. Hey, buddy. Welcome to the Chaos Theater. Somebody get this man a drink. Coke Zero, right? A cocktail waitress with a fringe appears with a Coke Zero. Scott takes the beverage and throws the cup to the floor. I'm not here to drink. I got no beef with you. What if I have beef with you? Are you so mad about that whole thing with the guild? You mean the league? Guild, league, whatever. It's ancient history. Gideon puts his arm around Ramona. I'll show you how ancient of history it is. Scott gets into a fighting stance. Gideon loses his cool. No use crying over spilt coke, buddy. The lady made her choice and we're all gonna move on. Well, I ain't moving, buddy. You wanna fight me for her? Was that not clear? Was that not clear? Sex with bomb shakes their heads. Gideon stands up, flexes. Now, why on earth do you wanna do that? Because I'm in love with her. Ramona and Scott lock eyes. A new power comes over Scott. He reaches for the heart design printed on his ratty vintage t-shirt, and pulls a flaming blue sword from his own chest. Scott earned the power of love. Ramona looks away from Scott. Gideon smiles. I think this deserves a song. Kimberly. 
Kim scratches her head with her middle finger before grudgingly launching into a number. We are sex bomb. We are here to make money and sell out and stuff. Kim clicks out a fast tempo. Sex bomb begin to rock out. A horde of hipster indie kids attack Scott Pilgrim on beat. Scott swings at them with his flaming blue sword. He slashes at them to the beat, exploding each attacker into coins. Scott then runs up the side of the pyramid towards Gideon. Ramona, my cane? Ramona hands Gideon a cane with G-Man engraved on the handle. He unsheaths a sword that could not have fit in there. Scott and Gideon leap towards each other. Gideon descends into like a vulture and smashes the sword out of Scott's hands. Scott hits the ground hard, rolling to a, top, to a stop. Love sucks, by the way. Gideon approaches to administer a final blow. If my cathedral of cutting-edge taste holds no interest for your tragedic, tra tragically Canadian sensibilities, then I shall grant you a swift exit from the premises and fast entrance into hell. Gideon raises his sword. Then from above... Knives Chow sails into frame and kicks the sword out of Gideon's hands. She lands awkwardly, tripping and falling down the side of the pyramid. Gideon chuckles. <laughs> this is priceless. Scott looks to Knives, both concerned and amazed. She quickly recovers and points a furious finger. Knives Chow, 18 years old. Fun fact, Scottaholic. You'll pay for what you did to him. Listen, Kung Pao Chicken, your old boyfriend brought this all on himself. He was warned plenty of times, but did he listen? Did he? I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to her. Angle on a confused Ramona standing behind Gideon. What? You broke the heart that broke mine. Get ready to chow down. Knives leaps up the pyramid toward a shocked Ramona. You're kidding, right? Knives pulls out knives and charges. Ramona fights defensively, redirecting Knives' parries without harming her. You can't say I don't know how to put on a show. Gideon lashes out at Scott. He can barely block Gideon's tremendous blows, distracted by his dueling axes. What the hell is your deal? You stole him with your advanced American slut technology. Duel, duel. The fighters weave in and out of each other, throwing blocks and punches, kung fu style. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't steal anyone. Scott lands a kick to Gideon's chest, sending him flying off the edge of the pyramid. He then blocks a punch from Knives to Ramona and spins her away, separating them. Can we please stop all this fighting? Nobody stole anybody, Knives. I dated you and then I dated Ramona, okay? I mean, maybe I kind of forgot to tell Knives right away, but... Then you cheated on me, Scott. You cheated on both of us. Knives and Ramona both look at Scott, neither amused. You cheated on me with Knives? No, I cheated on Knives with you. Is there a difference? You weren't wrong? Scott breaks into a flop sweat. What? Knives and Ramona stare at Scott. Game over. Stab! A sword pierces Scott's chest from behind. Scotty, you can't cheat on these ladies all you want, but you can't cheat death. Scott slides off Gideon's sword and falls to the ground. Texts with arrow pointing to Scott. Dead. Everything goes white. Sand blows through frame. Scott's eyes blink open. He looks up into a blinding blue sky. Exterior, the dream desert day. Scott sits up next to a lone cactus, rubbing his temples. Uh... Ramona appears out of nowhere, fainter than before. I'm sorry. Dying probably sucks. You know what sucks? Getting killed by that guy. That guy, why him? It's complicated. Well, maybe now we should be the... Should be the time to get into it, seeing as I'm about to die. All right. The truth is, it was me who was obsessed. I was crazy about him, but he ignored me. I was more alone when we were together than I ever was on my own. That's why I had to leave, and that's when he started paying attention. So why go back? I can't help myself around him, Scott. He just, he has a way of getting into my head. Well, that's legitimately disappointing. I really will leave you alone forever now. No, I mean, he literally has a way to get into my head. Rowena lifts her hair up on the back of her head, revealing a blinking chip implanted on her skull. All right, that is evil. He's like that. Ramona covers the chip, self-consciously touching her hair. So, this kind of sucks for everybody, eh? I'm sorry I had to end this way. We had a good run, I guess. You can't say I didn't try. I really fought for you back there. 
Uh huh. The wind blows harder. Ramona seeming to fade away. But someone was fighting pretty hard for you back there. Scott's eyes go wide with epiphany. Knives. I wish I was ever. <laughs> I wish I was ever as frantically devoted to anything as that girl was to you. Ramona slowly dissolves away in the sand. I feel like I learned something, which would be great if I wasn't dead. Ramona is gone. Scott slumps to his knees. So, so alone. Da-ding! The pilgrim head appears and rotates around Scott. Ah! We flash back to Scott swiping the pilgrim head, then fast forward through the breakup with Ramona and Sexobomb. We hear Scott screaming throughout this magical restart. Interior Wallace's apartment night. We fast forward all the way to Wallace's apartment. As Scott enters, he flicks the light on. Ah, I can't believe I had to see that again. Again. Turn off the light! Scott flicks the light off on pitch black. Wallace, when my journey began, I was living in an ordinary world. Ramona skated through my dreams, and it was like a call to adventure. A call I was considered, I considered res- refusing. But my mentor, that's you, told me if I want something bad enough, I have to fight for it. So I did. There were tests, allies, enemies. I approached a deep cave and went through a crazy ordeal during which I totally seized the sword. Sadly, I died. Then I resurrected. And now I realize that I should have been fighting for her for all along. But before I do that, I need to ask one final favor of you. Sure thing, guy. Can you put a robe on and hand me the phone? Wallace flicks on a bedside lamp, hands him the phone. Toronto, Chaos Theater, Gideon Graves. Tell him Scott Pilgrim is calling. Scott, I was just about to... Hey, pal. I feel terrible about everything. I don't want any hard feelings, so I figure why not be the bigger man and give you a call? Um... Sorry. What I meant to say is I'm coming over to kill you. Scott hangs up and heads for the door. Hardcore. Go kick that guy's ass! Wallace stands to high-five Scott, exposing his junk. Sorry. You've seen one. Exterior streets of Toronto Day. Scott Pilgrim runs towards the desolate warehouses. The same hipster kid smokes a cigarette against the wall. Your hair looks stupid. The hipster kid explodes into coins. Interior warehouse day. Scott approaches the two hipster kids guarding the elevator. Stop. Whatever. Scott split kicks them in the faces, knocking them out. Interior chaos theater continuous. Ding. Scott exits the elevator and steps into Gideon's underground lair of cool shit. The chaos theater again. Yeah, see, the table read was just so... Scott knocks down Como and looks to sex for bomb. Scott, let it go. Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. Steven, the new lineup rocks. You guys sound better without me. Young Neil, you have learned well. From this point forward, you should be known as Neil. And Kim? Kim looks at Scott, deadpan as ever. Sorry about everything. Kim shrugs. Sorry about me. Kim smiles at Scott for the first time ever. Scott Pilgrim. Scott turns to Gideon on his throne, Ramona at his side. Hey, buddy. Welcome to the chaos. Save it. You're pretentious. The club sucks. I have beef. Let's do it. Scott goes straight into fight mode. You want to fight me for Ramona and Scott lock eyes. A strange new power overcomes Scott, different than before. No. I want to fight you for me. Scott reaches for the heart design printed on his ratty t-shirt and pulls a flaming red sword from his own chest. Scott has earned the power of self-respect. Kim? We are Sexo Bomb and we're here to watch Scott Pilgrim kick your teeth in! Kim drives a hardcore beat. Sexo Bomb rock the fuck out. Hipsters attack Scott Pilgrim to the beat. Scott swings his flaming red sword, exploding each attacker into coins. Ramona, my cane. Ramona hands Gideon his cane. He unsheaths his sword. Scott and Gideon run towards each other, leaping in the air. They pass in the air and Scott slashes. They land on opposite sides of the platform, backs to each other. How's it going back there? You dick. Gideon falls down, dead, apparently. Scott calls out. Knives, I know you're in here. Don't attack her. Knives sails through the air and kicks Ramona in the head super hard. We hear a metallic clonk. They square off. Ramona staggered, knives pulling knives. Steal my boyfriend, taste my steel. Scott jumps between them and hands held out. Enough! Knives tries to go around him. Scott grabs her wrist. She kicks him in the face. No, Scott, this stupid ass hurt me and I will have my revenge. No, Knives, I hurt you. I cheated on you. Knives steps back, stunned. 
You cheated on me, Scott? I cheated on both of you. And I'm sorry. I was a different guy back then. Knives. From frown melts. Scott turns to Ramona. And you're not a you're not a stupid ass. She didn't mean that. So are we all good? Ramona rubs the back of her head. The chip no longer blinks. Never felt better. Are we all done with the hugging and learning? I thought we had a fight going on here. All turn to see Gideon, bloodied but still grinning. A lopsided slash across his face, accentuating his smirk. Oh, you got a fight, all right. Scott steps into a fighting stance. Knives joins him. Ramona, are you with me? Ramona looks to Gideon, then joins Scott and Knives and strikes a fight pose. The three of them ready to rumble. Wrong move, baby. Scott attacks with his sword. Gideon blocks, disarms Scott with one move, spins and butts and butts Scott in the face with the hilt of the sword. Scott teeters on the edge of the pyramid. Knives throws her knives. Gideon's lightning fast sword deflects them. Shing, shing. Gideon wheels towards Ramona, expecting her to move. She looks doubtful, takes a hesitant step towards him. He grins. Yeah, you're still my girl. Ramona steps up to Gideon and whispers in his ear. Let's both be girls. Ramona knees Gideon in the balls. Gideon swings his sword at Ramona. Knives whips off her scarf, uses it to wrap up Gideon's sword arm and disarms him. Scott and Knives punch Gideon in the face in a volley of freeze frames. Knives kicks Gideon in the stomach and Scott falls with a punch in the nose, sending Gideon sliding across the floor. Gideon gets back to his feet via backflip. He shakes off the assault and grins. You made me swallow my gum. That's going to be my digestive tract for seven years. Gideon throws a series of washer moves that give him a power-up. His glasses glow. His health bar increases. He makes an X with his fingers and draws a new power-up sword. He cuts big arcs at Scott, Knives, and Ramona. They barely dodge him. Scott spies his sword and picks it up just in time to block Gideon's attack. The sword creates an X. Ramona kicks. Gideon blocks, knocking her down. Gideon swings at Scott. Scott ducks. Knives attacks and scores a hit. Gideon hits her back, dropping her. Scott attacks. They fence. Gideon spins low. Scott leaps in the air. Gideon spins again and swings upward. Scott blocks with his sword and is sent up into the air. Gideon jumps after him. They clash in the air. Scott's sword shatters. Scott lands hard. Gideon lands in front of, his, of him and raises his sword for the kill. Ramona swings Gideon's velvet rope, canceling out Gideon's digital sword. Gideon slaps Ramona in the face and sends her painfully tumbling down the pyramid. She lands painfully in the bottom. Knives and Scott share a look. They get up and circle Gideon. Combo attack. Freeze frame punches. Knives kicks and Scott punches, sending Gideon back and forth like a pinball. Kick, punch. Kick, punch. Kick. Gideon's face smashes with each, with each impact. Ramona rises to see Scott and Knives kicking ass. Scott slides knives through Gideon's legs. From the floor, she kicks him in the back of the head, then upends him like a wheelbarrow and kicks him in the face, sending him spinning. Gideon lands hard on his knees, defeated. One lens of his glasses cracks. He looks up at the steely-eyed Scott. Who do you think you are, Pilgrim? You think you're better than me? I'll tell you what you are. A pain in my ass. How long does it... How long... Hmm. You know how long it took to get all these evil exes contact information so I could form this stupid league? Like two hours. Gideon starts to pixelate quite badly. Not long now. You're not cool enough for Ramona. You're zero. You're nothing. Me? I'm what's hit. I'm what's happening. I'm blowing up right now. You're right. I'm not cool enough for Ramona. You got another thing right. You are blowing up right now. Scott spins and back heels Gideon in the face. Gideon's head explodes, his glasses sailing down the steps of the pyramid. Then his body follows suit in an almighty poo. Shimmering coins rain down. Scott and Knives kiss. Whoa. There goes our deal. We're still getting paid, right? Kim points to the falling coins. There goes our deal. Oh. Stills jumps off stage and picks up coins. The coin rain continues, silhouetting Scott and Knives in their kung fu poses. They share a smile. You two make a good combo. Ramona, awake now, makes her way towards them. Yeah? Yeah. The trio walk down the pyramid steps. Scott picks up Gideon's fallen glasses. The glasses glimmer. Gideon's voice echoes. You can defeat me, but can you defeat yourself? Scott peers into the glimmering gl lenses, spotting his evil mirror image staring back at him. The glasses dissolve, and Scott whips around to face... Nega Scott! Nega Scott! Walks towards Scott, Knives and Ramona. Fringed hair, dark clothes, evil face. Knives and Ramona flank Scott in a fighting stance. 
No, it's something I have to face on my own. The girls reluctantly exit stage left as Scott walks forward to confront his dark side. Scott and Negascott face off. Both take a step forward. Exterior of the warehouse evening. Knives and Ramona huddle in the snow outside Chaos Theater. They look expectantly at the entrance, worried for Scott. Then, Scott trolls out with Negascott. They chat amiably, amiably, shake hands, and part ways. Scott approaches Knives and Ramona. What happened? Oh, nothing. We just shot the shit. He's a super nice guy. We actually have a lot in common. Scott runs his fingers through his hair. Your hair. What? It's getting really shaggy. Scott's hat appears on his head. He looks totally frick. Yeah? I like it. Knives removes the hat from Scott's head, literally taking his guard down. Ramona sees this and smiles. You do? Scott smiles and realizes Ramona has gone. He turns to see her, pulling her hood up and walking into the darkness. Scott calls after her, steps tentatively away from Knives. Hey, where are you going? Ramona, hoping to slip away, stops and turns back. I don't know. I should probably disappear. After all that? It's hard, you know? I came here to get away, but the past keeps catching up. I'm tired of people getting hurt because of me. Ramona looks at Knives as she says this. I think I understand. Snow begins to fall. Ramona straightens her parka tenderly. I should thank you, though. For what? For being the nicest guy I've ever dated. Oh, well, that's kind of sad. <laughs> it is kind of sad. No longer for 2072. Uh, she takes his hand briefly and lets it try. Well, buy and stuff. Yeah, and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, she turns to walk off again. Scott watches, then hears. Go get her. Surprise! Scott turns back to see a smiling knife. What? You earned it. You've been fighting for her all along. Well, what about you? I'll be fine. I'm too cool for you anyway. There's she grins. Oh. She grins and kisses his cheek. There's someone out there for me. We hear a cough. Young Neil sad saddles into frame behind her, guitar still in hand. We hear a second cough. Nega Scott also saddles into frame. Knife doesn't look back, but urges Scott to. Go talk to her before she's gone. Ramona walks on into the night alone, but then... Hey, mind if I tag along? Ramona is flabbergasted to see a cheery Scott walk alongside. You want to come with me? I thought maybe we could try again. Ramona smiles. She holds out her hand like in the park scene earlier. Scott takes it. We see the door with the star on it standing right in the middle of the street, snow swirling around it. Scott and Ramona walk towards the door, surprise coming up over Toronto. Night magically turning to day, winter turning to spring. Over this magical transformation, we hear a lush rendition of Ramona swelling and hear whispers of gossip over Toronto's cell phone airwaves. Oh my god, can I blow your mind? Scott Pilgrim totally threw down with Gideon Graves at the grand opening at Chaos Theater. Yeah, it was pretty, it was apparently awesome. Oh my god, it was a huge fight. I mean, bananas. My little brother kicked a guy's head off. Literally, it was unbelievable. Someone seriously should have been filming it. Scott and Ramona walk through the, through the door, tilt up to the heavens, and reveal the continue graphic in the stars. Continue? Ten. Nine. Does anybody have any coins? Eight. Come on, seriously. Seven. Six. Five. Guys, I want to, you know, come on, I want to keep doing this. Four. Three. Two. Got, uh, one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the end. That was spectacular, everybody. Thank y'all for watching, and we will see you at the next one.